Bespoke Radio for the Masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. To Fade to Black with Jimmy Judge on the Game Changer Network. Oh, yeah. How you doing? Fade to Black. Bespoke radio for the masses. Yeah, man, it's Thursday. It's January 26th. Twenty-six days into the new year, just 339 days left. And I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the planet. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? Are you ready? It's Thursday night, Fader night. Got John Rappaport here and his uber famous no more fake newsroom live that's right followed by open lines all night long the call in number is 323-825-5045 look at the dancing gifts cranking out today look at my dancers you guys the very best i'll retweet them all i'm not scared Follow us on Twitter at Church Radio. Facebook, YouTube, you know what to do. Everything is fade to black. Let's go over to the website, click, get her done. You can email throughout the show tonight, as in every night, jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. The sandbox is hashtag F2B on Twitter. Hashtag F2B. We don't bite. Come and hang out. It is in real time. Ah, you got to love it. You got to love Tweet Deck. You have to. All right. Man, I felt like uh, reaching out to a Jack Dorsey today. I was in a Jack Dorsey mood. More on that in a bit. Any questions or comments during the show tonight? Again, in real time, hashtag F2BQ. Any questions or comments? That's what you do. I keep everything live. I have uh, Twitter to my left. I've got the chat rooms to my right. Oh, let me... I mean, I didn't do that yet. Let's bang open the, the chat room. See who's here, Tina. All right. Carola. Carola. John. What's up, everybody? All right, let's go. I am ready. And uh, there is uh, uh, some special thanks that have to go out right now. I've got to thank Ronnie McMullen of uh, Life Change Tea. I'm just going to do it right now. I got... Um, well, Rita and I got a, a very cool care package from him today. And I got the brand new pine bark drops. I don't even know pine bark extract. I don't even know if this is on the website yet. So you should go and check that out. But uh, I got refills. Uh, Rita stole my Moringa. And check this out. Okay. I do the drops. So I do pills too. I, you know, I do the capsules. Allison, Allie C and stuff. But um, anyway, Rita, so I, I fill up my pockets and <laughs> these bottles of drop. And Rita came in here and patted me down. She patted me down. She wanted to know what I was stealing for the bunker. I got the pat down. She made me empty my pockets. What is that? I said, it's my cell phone. <laughs> What's that? 
That's 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 my ID. And she was f- patting me down my pockets. I'm not kidding. That's what this stuff does to you, man. You need your fix. These drops are incredible. Anyway, thank you, Ronnie, uh, for for doing the Uber hookup. And uh, I'll follow up on on that on Monday. But uh, a great package today from Ronnie. Do check out all of our sponsors, including Life Change Tea, GetTheTea.com. Uh, just go over to Jimmy Church Radio. That's what you do. Click on all of the banners. Uh, River Moon Coffee, makers of the Fade to Black Blend, of course. Uh, Studio Dome, all of the uh, uh, promo codes that you need for free shipping or discounts or everything are on every banner. So help support the show and go and do that. Uh, the first big conference of the season is coming up. I'm going to give a big shout out to a friend of mine uh, that I grew up with uh, down in Panama, Ricky Royo. Uh, he just uh, texted me right before the show saying that he was going to attend. So how cool is that? All of you fader knots get to meet the famous Ricky Royo. He will be there. So all of you, all of the information that you need is over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. The Conscious Life Expo is February 10th through the 13th at the LAX Hilton. And Ricky just let me know he's got rooms at the LAX Hilton. So there you go. You kind of want to stay at the Hilton if you're coming in from out of town. You want to stay there because all 5,000 attendees and speakers, everybody is at the LAX Hilton right here in Los Angeles, California. Tickets, info, live stream, all of that are over at JimmyTurnsRadio.com. And then Contact in the Desert is rapidly coming up on us, too, May 19th through the 22nd in Joshua Tree, California. All of you fader knots from around the country are going to gather there. Of course, we will have uh, a couple of fader pads, a couple of fader houses, and, and a few fader parties. So it's going to be awesome. So all of you fader knots, get together. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's really amazing for us to just kick back, Rita and I, just kick back and watch all of you hang out. It is just so cool. So come and hang out with us in Joshua Tree, California. Tickets and info over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Let's get the show cracking. I had said the other day that if you were in or around San Diego, California, on Tuesday at around 3 p.m., did you hear the booms? Did you feel the ground move? If you did, we want to hear from you. Tonight is Fader Night, and come on and uh, tell us about it. Uh, the uh, the local media down there reported about it. Fox News reported on it. It did make it into the media. Something happened, and I just want to know. And uh, there were also some reports of some stuff in the sky. So if you were there. Let us know. The military and the FAA have stepped in and said they had nothing in the area. All right. So we want to hear from you on that tonight. And let's get this show cracking. I'm ready. Happy birthday to today. Mike and Dave Barra are both 29 years old. Can you believe it? And then Mike updated and said, no, we're not 29. We're 47. And that's their story. They are sticking to it. Happy birthday Mike and Dave Barra. Also today, yes, I'm looking at all of the gifts. The man, Eddie Van Halen, today is 62 years old. Look at all of these Eddie Van Halen gifts. You guys know where my heart lies, obviously. I didn't know that there there, were that, there must be 50 posted already. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Where do you get those gifts? Those are cool. Those are all cool. Um, I want to light it up in Twitter right now. Everybody knows my love of uh, for Eddie Van Halen. But what's your favorite Van Halen song? And uh, I just want to see that. I, I just want to see where, where you guys are at with this. Number one. Number two, let's take it a step further because your favorite Van Halen song is one thing. But what's your favorite Eddie riff may not be part of your favorite Van Halen song. It's not for me, by the way. All right. So there you go. Let's see. What's your favorite Van Halen song? What's what's Eddie's best riff? And it's let's see how many people can avoid eruption. All right, let's go. Our dead guy's birthday today is Paul Newman, 1925 to 2008. He won 
he won and was nominated for numerous awards, including an Academy Award for his performance in the 1986 film The Color of Money. He's got a BAFTA Award, Screen Actors Guild Award, a Cannes Film Festival Award, of course, an Emmy, and many others. Newman's other films include The Hustler, Cool Hand Luke, man, that opening scene, right? Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, The Sting, and The Verdict. Hey, uh, who here has watched uh, Sneaky Pete? Anybody get through that series yet? Sneaky Pete with uh, Giovanni Ribisi. Who has seen Sneaky Pete? So many references to The Sting in that. It's a great series, by the way. Uh, Do check it out. Highly recommended. Good stuff. Despite being colorblind, by the way, Newman won several national championships as a driver. Right. He was a great race car driver in the Sports Car Club of America Road Racing Series. And his race teams won several championships in open-wheel IndyCar racing that I witnessed personally myself at Indy, Newman Haas. All right. Happy birthday, Paul Newman. Ice cream man. All right, I'll go with that. Running with the devil. Yeah. The Riff and Unchained. Yes. I'm with you on that. Hot for Teacher. Got to go with that. Top Jimmy. Uh, Top Jimmy is a a song. (laughs) Kind of funny. Is a song that people don't think of first. I think Top Jimmy is one of the greats. Uh, That's a good one. Hot for Teacher. Yep, absolutely. The whole first album says Jerry. Uh, what was that Michael Jackson song? It was called Beat It. Uh, that was a pretty good riff, actually, there. He didn't play the guitar, rhythm guitar. He just played the solo. Uh, let's see. Atomic Punk. I'm with you on that. Atomic Punk. How about On Fire? On Fire was pretty. Hear about it later. What about hear about it later? Right? Man, the whole Van Halen 2 album, actually. But, man, Diver Down. <sighs> Women and children first. Ooh, right? Fair warning. It's just like, it, it doesn't really matter, right? All right. Uh, Beyond the Strange is doing a live broadcast at CITD. Is that right? From the Fader House again? That'll be cool. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in on that. I'll photobomb that one. I'll wait solo. Ron, you're right about that. I played that at Coast to Coast last week, by the way. Um, pound cake with the drill. <laughs> uh, you guys are the best, man. I, I just love it. Uh, the solo and jump. Yep. Yep. You guys know what you're talking about. Okay. Ah, uh, where am I on this day in history? Are you ready? This is just, it is, it's a dark day. 1980 at the request of president Jimmy Carter. The United States Olympic Committee votes to ask the International Olympic Committee to cancel or move the upcoming Moscow Olympics. Of course, that did not happen, so we did not go. Dark day. Got politics all wrapped up into the Olympics because the Russians decided to go and invade Afghanistan, which we did too, right? It would have been funny if Moscow would have... uh, uh, jump back at us <laughs> and didn't attend the Olympics uh, on any on any of the Olympics since how long have we been there since man 2001 incredible between 1300 this is a fader fact between 1300 and 1650 the years 1300 and 16, 1650 up to 500,000 Europeans, mostly women, by the way, were executed for allegedly practicing witchcraft. And I'm not making that up. A half a million. That is just nuts. I was looking at the stats today, and just official numbers, like on the books, right? Like went to court and was executed, 79,000 official on the books executed um, uh, for witchcraft. And (laughs) Germany, Germany racked up like 19,000 officially on the books. Up to 500,000. Man, I love my fade to black coffee. Tonight is another fader night, everybody, with John Rappaport. 
is no more fake newsroom live. We will be taking your phone calls, of course, open lines all night long, 323-825-5045. Well, I mentioned, uh, by the way, cough button. I mentioned uh, a couple of days ago, and I've talked about it over the last couple of days, actually, that George Orwell's 1984 was number six on Amazon's bestsellers list, and that it was hovering between five and seven. They updated it every hour, by the way, so it can change, right? And, well, as of 6 p.m. today, the last time I checked, right before showtime, It was at number one. It has been there since Tuesday night. Number one. I have a feeling it's going to be there for a while, by the way, and I hope that we had something to do with it, and I'm sure that we did. Nothing like waking up, you know, the people, you know, just a little bit, waking them up. And that's what's going on right now. And after I did my rant the other night, I ended up listening to the audio book of 1984 why, while I was, you know, heading off to La La Land. And I got to say, I had the best, most colorful, widescreen, cinematic dream while pondering the significance of short person behavior and pedal to press, panchromatic resonance and other highly ambient domains. And then I woke up and I was feeling quite refreshed. I meandered over to the FBI website to see what was new, you know, doing a little window shopping, if you know what I mean, with uh, UFOs still dancing in my head. And to that end, I was thinking that while most people are clinched in a slugfest right now over the worldwide debate about aliens and discussing UFO sightings in space and on Earth, and the sheer number of whistleblowers who have come forward saying that we are not alone in the universe. These are changing times. We know this. So, while window shopping over at the FBI website, I found something. Right now, the FBI has a very interesting document posted up on their site. You know, that section called The Vault. Have you been there? Have you gone to the FBI's The Vault? Well, you should. Go check it out. Punch in UFO. See what, see what pops up. But this particular declassified document states that not only have we been visited by E.T., apparently we've been visited by beings. I'm air quoting right now. Beings from other dimensions, end quote. However... It is noteworthy to mention here that the document itself did not originate within the FBI. No, it did not. The document, which is an extract from a 69-page document called UFO1.pdf, remember that, was written by a former university head. Now, nevertheless, the document was treated with great importance by the FBI which is something that I find very interesting. The document, which was received on July 8th, 1947, states, I'm going to read directly here. All right, so I'm going to open quote right now. This memorandum is respectfully addressed to certain scientists of distinction to important aeronautical and military authorities, to a number of public officials, and to a few publications. The writer has little expectation that anything of import will be accomplished by this gesture. The mere fact that the data herein were obtained by so-called supernormal means is probably sufficient to ensure its disregard by nearly all of the persons addressed. Nevertheless, it seems a public duty to make it available. The present writer has several university degrees and was formerly a university department head. A various, a, a very serious situation may develop at any time with regard to the flying saucers. If one of these should be attacked, the attacking plane will almost certainly be destroyed. 
in the public mind, this might create a near panic and international suspicion. The principal data concerning these craft is now at hand and must be offered. No matter how fantastic and how unintelligible it may seem to minds not previously instructed in thinking of this type. Now, it goes on with a series of bullet points. Number one, part of the disc carry crews. Others are under remote control. Number two, their mission is peaceful. The visitors contemplate settling on this plane. Number three, these visitors are human-like, but much larger in size. Number four, they are not excarnate earth people, but come from their own world. Interesting. Number five, they do not come from a planet as we use the word, but from an etheric planet, which interpenetrates with our own and is not perceptible to us. It's 1947, people. Number six, the bodies of the visitors and the craft automatically materialize on entering the vibratory rate of our dense matter. Are you listening? Number seven, the disks possess a type of radiant energy or a ray, which will easily disintegrate any attacking ship. They re-enter the etheric at will and will so simply disappear from our vision without a trace. Number eight, the region from which they come is not the astral plane but corresponds to the locus or the talus. Students of the esoteric matters will understand these terms. Number nine, they probably cannot be reached by radio, but probably can be seen on radar if a signal system can be devised for that apparatus. Now, after the series of bullet points, if that wasn't interesting enough, and I could break down each one of those, and please remember, 1947, July 8th, it continues with this. We give information and warning and can do no more. Let the newcomers be treated with every kindness. Unless the disc are with, and this part is illegible, can't read it. Uh, illegible, uh, illegible, with which our culture and science are incapable of dealing. A heavy responsibility rests upon the few in authority who are able to understand this matter. And it follows up with this. It says addendum. The locus, that's L-O-K-A-S, the locus are oval-shaped, fluted length, Oval with a heat-resisting metal or alloy not yet known. The front cage contains the controls. The middle portion, a laboratory. The rear contains armament, which consists essentially of a powerful energy apparatus, perhaps a ray. The UFO-1 document that I just read from is dated July 8th, 1947. Does that date sound familiar? Think about what I just said. It should. Because also on July 8th, 1947, now that was an FBI released internal document dated on July 8th, 1947. Also on July 8th, 1947, the Roswell Army Airfield Public Information Officer Walter Hout issued a press release stating that personnel from the field's 509th Operations Group had recovered a flying disc which had crashed on a ranch near Roswell. The UFO-1 doc was released on July 8, 1947, which means it was actually written before that date, 
It was then sent to the FBI, who thought it was important enough to release it out to the agency. But what the writer could not have known anything about was the Roswell crash. The Army press release hadn't happened yet. Without the Army's press release, there are no newspapers, there are no radio, there's nothing. This writer, a very educated person who needed to get this information out, and the FBI picked it up and distributed it internally, and then every, and released that on the same day. July 8th, 1947, as the press release coming out of Roswell, New Mexico. Now, think about this. And it's, but that's not what's interesting here. It's not that the knowledge was there, because that is, that is true. And we know what happened in Roswell, and we know about that. What is interesting is that they were released on the same day. 1947 was a game-changer year for everything. Technology, humanity, Washington, D.C., man, ev ev everything. The Air Force being created. I mean, transistors. So much stuff happened in 1947. It's just a remarkable year. But what about July 8th, 1947? What are the odds of that happening? The same exact subject matter from two independent sources releasing this on the same day, the Army and the FBI. I need you to think about that for a second. It is truly remarkable. And, and it's just something that you need to go in and, and find these things out for yourself. Nobody else is going to talk about it. Nobody's going to give you this information. And that's why you are here, my friends. It's absolutely incredible. Tonight is another Fader Night. It is open lines all night long. But first, the one, the only, John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom Live. Right here. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. You can follow John Rappaport uh, at John Rappaport. His website is nomorefakenews.com. I'll be right back with Rap Report. Stay right there. Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black. You create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go Beckley Tepe. Hi, folks. In a world of GMO, genetically modified organisms, that is, chemicals, processed foods, and a healthcare system that's unraveling like a cheap suit, it's time to prepare. 
God created herbs, and herbs help man. Our body can heal itself, just sometimes we need assistance. You need some help? Get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com. Our mild detox is quite powerful with its unique blend of eight different herbs. And if you're looking for more, our non GMO supplements will help you with different needs you might have. Health should be a top priority. Take care of your health naturally. Log on to get the tea. Dot com. That's get the tea dot com. Give your body a treat. Let the herbs do their thing naturally. Read all the testimonies on the website. Get the tea dot com. That's get the tea dot com. Sickness and viruses are like intruders and herbs are like warriors. Let the tea work for you. That's get the tea dot com. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Hi, this is Chase Kletsky with Fate Magazine Radio, and you're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA digital broadcast station where the Fader Knots rock. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Massey, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. And now, coming to you from the No More Fake Newsroom in Deep Space, which is the space that we suspect to be true. That the world as it is fed to us every day by the ministry of truth is a lie, a false reality, a movie projected on the screen of our subconscious. This, however, is the breakout. All the screens crash. They all go down and we see the light of day, a new day. No more robots. No more androids. It's the No More Fake Newsroom with John Rappaport. Take it away, John. Thank you, Jimmy. Good to be here, folks. News exploding in a hundred different directions. It's quite something, quite something. The reason uh, that I called my website nomorefakenews.com 15 years ago, as I've mentioned here on the show before, is because I was working as a freelance reporter writing for newspapers and magazines. And there were certain stories that I wanted to get into print. I wanted not only to get them into print, but I wanted to see them proliferate, which means further investigations, make it into something as big as it actually was. And because I ran up against a brick wall in several cases, I decided that I was dealing with a fake news machine, which is the press, the major press. And you'll see a story at No More Fake News this week, quotes from various mainstream reporters that I've talked to over the years and what they really had to say off the record about their careers, about their press outlets, about the way the game works and so on and so forth. Well, the whole notion now of fake news is exploding to the point where it's jumped off the cliff, basically. (laughs) That is, major media, who are the purveyors of fake news, are accusing everybody that they can find under the sun of being fake news. This is their primary strategy these days. And uh, in the process, they are also stepping up the pace of their own fake news to the wildest kinds of configurations that I've ever seen in my 34 years in the biz. So it's quite a scene, as they say. It's quite a scene. And... uh, I think it's good. I think it's very good that they are self-destructing and this makes room for many new stories, but it also makes room for people who want to 
What do they want to do? They want to exaggerate things that are happening without providing any evidence for it. Be on the lookout for extreme stories that would have what you would call a positive spin, something you would want to have happen. For example, if you saw a story that says uh, CIA admits UFOs are real, uh, we have been visited before many times, and so on and so forth. And then you look at the source. Where is that story coming from? And quite often you'll see it's being linked somewhere else and you keep on tracking the links back and then you come to a website that turns out to be satire or that turns out to have many stories that are obviously fake. So be aware, be alert, track it down. Don't fall for everything. So tonight I thought I would return to a couple of stories that I was intensely researching before I put my website online that convinced me that I was indeed knocking my head against a brick wall and the news media, major media, in refusing to look at the evidence and take it up were leading the population down a false path. And one of those stories was the Oklahoma City bombing of 1995, April 19th. My investigation began with the explosion itself. It seemed like the place to start. And indeed it was. And flashing ahead, when the Twin Towers were hit, on September 11th, 2001, one of the first things that I wrote was at that time, look at the explosion, look at the explosion. Start there because if there is anything askew in what major media are reporting, it's probably going to start right there and you're going to find out things you didn't believe were possible, but actually were more than possible. And that proved to be correct for anybody who's been following 9-11. What actually happened to take down the towers becomes one of the key, key questions. Well, in the case of the Oklahoma City bombing, I spoke with a retired general, Ben Parton, who said to me straight off the bat, this scenario does not work. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, if you examine the remains of the federal building in Oklahoma City after the bombing, you will see that certain columns in the building stood up and other columns went down. And if you assume that the bomb came out of a rider truck that was parked at the curb, in front of the building, you know where the explosion was coming from, and yet there are columns near to the truck that stayed up and columns further away that went down. Same columns. Doesn't make any sense. The pattern of destruction could not have occurred as a result of a truck bomb. Well, that certainly gave me pause for thought. I talked to a couple of uh, colleagues and I told them what General Parton had said. They concurred, but I decided I needed more. I spoke with a very good pro, explosive expert, and he gave me another angle on the whole thing. He said, what are they saying? They are saying that there were I can't remember the exact figure now, eight or 12 barrels inside the Ryder truck. And these barrels were filled with ammonium nitrate and fuel oil, which combined can produce an explosion. He said, but the thing is, you have to use debt cord, detonation cord, to wire up all of these barrels together. 
and then a fuse will ignite the whole kit and caboodle. But it takes a real pro to know how to do that. This is not just, oh, we'll hook it all up and then we'll light a fuse and, you know, the whole, no. If you don't get it exactly right, which is a professional job, something that McVeigh, through his background, there was no evidence that he would be able to do this. If you don't get it right, you don't get a simultaneous explosion from all of the barrels, in which case you end up with fertilizer all over the street. That gave me more pause for thought. I talked with yet another explosive expert who said to me, the thing you have to understand is that when you set off a bomb like this that moves out into the open air outside the truck parked at the curb, the force of that wave, that shock wave, diminishes extremely quickly in the open air. And by the time it actually crashes through the front of the federal building, it is already extremely weakened from the original core of the explosion. And there is just not enough to have caused the damage that occurred in that building. Now, I really paused for thought. So I thought, okay, now, where are the witnesses to the explosion? I hear nothing about any witnesses. So I called up a reporter on the Daily Oklahoman who had been covering uh, the bombing, and I said to her, where are the witnesses? I see no witnesses who could have explained what they saw, which would have been key to understanding something about the bombing. And she said, well, she found one witness one out of all the people who were around in Oklahoma City at nine o'clock in the morning that day, one witness. I said, well, I want to talk to him. So we wrangled a little bit back and forth and she said, okay, I'll give you his name and tell you where he works and you can talk to him if you can reach him. So I called the place of employment. They put this guy on and I said to him, look, I'm researching the bombing. And I know that you spoke with a reporter at the Daily Oklahoman. And what she told me was, because this is what she relayed to me, your story is that you saw the building collapse downward like it would in a controlled demolition. So I want you to confirm that for me. He said, no, I won't. I said, why not? He said, because I didn't really see the explosion at all. I just saw the aftermath after it was over. I said, really? That's not what she said over there. And he said, well, she's wrong, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right. I called her back and I told her what he said. She said, he's lying. She said, I have it in my notes. I don't do distortion. This is exactly what he told me, that he saw the building collapse downward like a controlled demolition. I don't care what he's saying now. That gave me more pause for thought. This witness is now afraid. Maybe somebody's gotten to him. Maybe the FBI told him to keep his mouth shut or he just is seeing a version of the story in the press that he knows is false and it's scaring him because he doesn't want to be the person who stands alone with a different story. This was the beginning of my investigation of the Oklahoma City bombing. I spoke with reporters. I spoke with lots of people. And I said, look, there is a fantastic story here. And you can talk to any explosive experts that you want to who are independent not connected with the investigation, not connected with the FBI, and so on, and ask them about 
what I'm going to tell you now, which is what I just told you here, fade to black. They refused. They just refused. I said, well, why won't you, you know, check on this? And what they told me basically off the record was the story is engraved in stone. We've got the story. We're not going to change the story. Besides, and this is a key, we get our information from the FBI because they are in charge of the investigation. I said, really? I said, yeah. I said, well, suppose the FBI has it wrong. Then what are you going to do? Where do you go? And they said, there is nowhere else to go. This is what we go with. The story is what reliable, quote, quote, reliable sources tell us. And those sources, in this case, are the FBI. That really opened my eyes and gave me pause for thought. In other words, what these people were telling me, these reporters, was the news is what official sources say it is, and there isn't any story beyond that. That's quite something. There isn't any story beyond that. I later discovered that if one of these reporters had decided to take my advice and talk to independent explosives experts, what his editor would have told him was that that constituted, quote, original research on the part of the reporter, which is verboten, off limits, not permitted, unless the assigning editor up front permits this, allows this, and supports it. Original research is considered to be wandering off the reservation for a mainstream reporter, and there are consequences. He is now looked at, you know, with a glint in the eye from the editor. This guy is not on the same page that the rest of us are on. He is trying to go somewhere where we don't go or he's trying to make a name for himself, or he's stepping out of the frame into something else. We don't like that. We don't want that. That's how fake news is built. And I found it quite incredible in more innocent days, (laughs) not anymore, back in 1995, that I couldn't get arrested in trying to get this story into, to push it up into major media. Because you see, in case you're wondering, if you accept the evidence that it was not the truck bomb that caused the damage to the federal building on April 19th, 1995 in Oklahoma City, then you are looking at a probable scenario where charges, explosives charges, were wired to columns inside the building, triggered remotely at the instant the truck bomb went off. The truck bomb was the cover story. The actual damage was done by blowing up certain columns in the building that would in fact cause a section of the building to fall and look like a controlled demolition. Upon inquiry, I discovered that there were columns inside that building that actually, these are huge columns, that had entrances where you could get inside the columns. So it's not like somebody's wired an explosive charge outside the column, inside the column, so it wouldn't be observed. Now, there are many other anomalies and problems with the official scenario and contradictions and so on. And a people's, quote, grand jury was impaneled. In other words, a local group investigated that, and they issued a report under the leadership of Charles Key, K-E-Y. And you can go online and you can find 
references to that report of what they discovered, an exhaustive investigation. I also spoke with, he is now deceased, a well-known figure in Oklahoma City, Hoppy Heidelberg, who was on the grand jury, the official grand jury now, the federal grand jury, that indicted McVeigh. And Hoppy was constrained in what he could directly tell me because grand jurors are not supposed to talk about what happens inside the grand jury. But reading between the lines of what he said, it was clear to me that the federal government sent in somebody, perhaps somebody from the CIA, I don't know for sure. He did, in fact, address the grand jury, and he basically assured them in description that a truck bomb had caused the damage to the building, and that was the end of that story, and there was nothing else to discuss. And that no questions were permitted from the grand jurors. He left, and that was that. Cover-up after cover-up after refusal to look at other scenarios. Because, of course, if we are looking at a sophisticated operation in which a bomb goes off in a truck, doesn't really cause any damage, and simultaneously with a remote detonator that is, you know, across the street, down the block, whatever, charges that are inside the columns go off and do the actual destruction. This is now a sophisticated operation. This is not a disgruntled soldier, Tim McVeigh, acting alone or in concert with one friend to pull this off. That is completely false. That is completely false. Which leads to a number of other questions such as, was McVeigh actually the one who did this? And if not, why is he saying that he did? Why is he pleading guilty? Why is his lawyer allowing this to happen? The story does not quit. It just goes on and on and on and on. And... Bill Clinton, who was the president at the time, his presidency was in trouble. And there were many groups around the country who were feeling the need to deny, let's say, what federal power had become in America vis-a-vis the Constitution and the original founding of the Republic. There's no way that I can characterize all these groups under one umbrella. But there was spreading through America in many different communities of different types the sense that the federal government was completely out of control. And in the wake of the Oklahoma City bombing, Bill Clinton gave a speech, which I call the come home to the government speech, in which he tried to assuage America's concerns about the Oklahoma bombing the act of terrorism, and so on and so forth, and basically said, look to us, your leaders, for guidance in these troubled times. We will not let you down. And because his kind of unctuous, oily presentation, you know, just happens to appeal to many Americans, he sold the bill. And in fact, the confidence in the federal government escalated at that point. So his aim was achieved. So I, as a reporter who was relying on one or two uh, very well-educated sources down in Oklahoma City to write about and investigate this bombing, This was one of the make-break points for me where I said, okay, look, there is no way that I can function as an independent reporter and delude myself that I can write for mainstream outlets or even alternative outlets 
print media. They're just not going to go for what I want to produce here. It's not going to work anymore. There's no use trying to kid myself here. And so I stepped away and a bunch of things happened at that point. But in 2001, I decided to bite the bullet and go online and find out what this whole thing called the Internet was all about. And I've never looked back. I am not alone in this experience, and I'm not talking about the Oklahoma bombing, but every independent reporter and independent media outlet that is really doing investigation and covering news and connecting the dots and describing what's happening behind the scenes has had one or more experiences like that that turned them around and made them see that this is not a free press by any stretch of the imagination. It is a controlled press. And there are reasons for that, some of which I've described here on Fade to Black before. On a mental, emotional, intellectual, psychological, spiritual level, this is a kind of thing that turns a reporter around, where he says, enough enough the only solution is to go independent and here 15 years after i uh took the plunge we are in fact seeing a fantastic revolution in media as i've described here before okay that's the story for tonight thanks folks man that's mind-blowing I mean, just mind blowing, John. And does all of this, and including your uh, recent blog from earlier in the week, with you consulting with uh, different journalists around the country and asking them, uh, you know, is their work on, or are they doing what they want to do, kind of thing, or can they do what they want to do? Uh, how does all of this sit with you now? Are are you just inflamed? Mm hmm. But also pretty happy. I mean. Inflamed in the sense that uh, more of the truth is coming to light and therefore there's a passion to keep on going and expose even more of it. Right. But happy because more people are realizing and waking up to the incredible control over the press in this country. Yeah, and I thought I'd share with you really quick because you probably didn't hear my opening rant or what I've said over the last couple of days, but... George Orwell's 1984 has been number one now for uh, the past uh, day and a half, almost two days on Amazon. And Is that right? That's right. Number one. And the whole ministry of truth is a lie that I introduce you with, you know, every week is <laughs> right. pretty dang interesting. And I just thought that you would enjoy that little fact right there that it is number one. And I just checked it right before the show tonight, and it's still sitting there at number one. So there you go. You have a lot to do with that, my friend. Ooh, baby. Yeah, you do. John Rappaport, everybody. Thank you so much, John. Have a great weekend. You too, Jimmy. Thank you. John Rappaport, nomorefakenews.com. It's Thursday night. It is Fader Night, 323-825-5045. Phone calls are already lined up. If you're on hold, stay right there. Open lines all night long. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I'll be right back. Stay there. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. Hello, I'm Becky Lee and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here, repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church. Fade to black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. 
buddy. <laughs> yes. You we are of the Honey, honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full-range boomboxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this. It's amazing. It's just $129, and use the promo code JCRTWS, and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go back, Lee Tappy. Balance of Nature's Fruits and Veggies. I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. I went from being able to work 14, 16 hours a day with no problem to where I could barely walk a block to the store. I went on to the phytonutrients about six months ago, and within a couple of months, my medical doctor had cut my prescriptions down in a, a little bit smaller dosage. The next time I went back, a month later, I walked into the doctor's office, and he says, my gosh, what's happened to you? You don't even look like the same person. He looked at my legs and the swelling had gone down. My blood pressure was down. The venous stasis ulcers that I had had on my legs for the last four or five years because of the poor circulation were all healed, and I'm feeling far better. The new challenge will allow you to receive two months of Balance of Nature's fruits and veggies free. And we'll even ship them to you free. Call now for details. Call 1-800-2468-751 or go online to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code TALK. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. Across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. All right, welcome back to Fade to Black. It's Thursday night, Fader night. Open lines all night long, 323-825-5045. Before we get to the phones, before we get to the phones, I want to make this announcement uh, now, right now. Um, on We the People over at whitehouse.gov, there is a new petition that was created earlier today. It's called Full Disclosure Now. Reveal and Dis- declassify 100-year-old classified Tesla patents for free energy motors. That's the title of the petition. All right. Now, we're going to post up here on Twitter right now uh, the links to the petition. Uh, we need 100,000 signatures. And if we get those done by February 25th, we are guaranteed a response from the White House. And I say we, it's actually you. You will get a response from the White House. All right. Now, um, the petitioner's name and and how it was done, you can find out everything over at uh, whitehouse.gov. And we're going to put up the links here. Uh, in just a second. And I think they are up now. Are they up now? Okay, they'll be up here in just a second. But the copy that goes along with this uh, petition says this. End America's oil dependence now. For the past 100 years, the economy has been driven by oil. Declassifying Nikola Tesla's work will lead to a clean and profitable alternative, putting America at w- at the forefront of of energy technology. The American people deserve to research free and clean energy to end the hold of oil dependence, leading to discoveries that will not, that do not depend on finite resources. It would change the face of nation into becoming the world leader in innovation and technology, propelling us into the new era. 
Operation Paperclip has siphoned trillions, if not quadrillions, of dollars into secret access defense contract programs. The American people must know the truth about where their missing 2.3 plus trillion tax dollars are going in the military industrial complex. It is time for America first. That's the petition. Okay, the links are up now. And uh, let's see here. Uh, re- where are, did I not see it? Okay, Rita's going to get the links up right now to the petition. And uh, and everybody get over there and sign it. We will push it. We will get it out there on social media. We will use all of our platforms to get the petition out. I don't know if I can actually do it in real time. Um, but uh, let me see here. Boom. 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 Petition. There it is. Let's see if this actually happens. Okay. Sign the petition okay all right everybody retweet this now that is a direct order from me there it is done get it out there sign the petition need a hundred thousand signatures by february 25th we can do it simple simple that's a walk in the park that's a day on the show here okay all right retweet retweet there you go i love you guys Look at that. Keep it going. Retweet it, retweet it, retweet it, retweet it. All of you. All right. Let's go to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? My name is Dylan. I'm calling from Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. Hi, Dylan. How are you from Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas? Are you in Dallas? Are you in Fort Worth? Are you in between? I'm, in, I'm right in between. I'm sorry. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, get off speaker if you can. I'm, I'm actually on headphones. Hang on. I'll try better. Oh, there you go. Now we got you. Okay. All right, cheap headphones. Uh, in between Dallas, Fort Worth, in a uh, suburb called Bedford. From Bedford. Okay. Oh, okay, Dylan, Dylan. I'll just let everybody know. Um, you sent me an email uh, this week about something that happened out there. And yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you tell the story real quick because I only know very little of it, everybody, okay? There's too much of it here that uh, went into the email. But um, you, I'm just going to throw you under the bus a little bit, uh, Dylan. No, go ahead. Go you ahead. you <laughs> like to uh, work in your garage, do those mechanical manly things, and listen to Fade to Black, <laughs> yeah. right? That's what you do. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's when I, when I listen to you, I'm in my shop working on motorcycles and and listen to you on your YouTube page. Okay, so, so uh, real quick before we get to this uh, amazing story, um, what kind of bikes? Oh, all kinds. Uh, working, I just built a 1969 Honda CB350. Working on a 1977 Suzuki GS550. Kind of cafe racer, brat style bikes. Oh man, that 350. You know what? I, I, I'll, I'll go on the record right now, just so you know where my yeah. head is at. That that 350, that motor. Uh, all well, the 400 too, but that 350 motor might be the coolest ever made in the history of motorcycles. It's, it's, yes, and it's it, it, they made it to look like the British bikes, the Triumphs and the BSAs and stuff like that. It's you know it looks like a, a you know just just like one of those, and the Japanese kind of copied it and they got away with it, and it looks pretty cool. So. And it's tiny, you know. It is, but it's, you know what? I mean, I on this bike, it's I put this up against any Harley, and it is louder. Yeah, because well, I slashed the pipes and uh, the monster. Yeah, and what I mean by tiny is, you know, it's a it's a four cylinder, and yeah. it, it it is it's like a, it's like a a, a watch, a, a Rolex. You know, it's got it's Probably just is. compact and 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 uh, you know all the horsepower you need. But it's a you know it's the baby version of the seven fifty. It's right there. It's a yeah. three fifty, and it's so yeah. cool. And so I'm, I'm right with you on that, man. And it's a good looking cool. motor too. Cool. Good looking. And I'll send you. So I'll email you a bunch of pics of the bikes I do, and I have I have a bunch of guitars that I made too. So I'll send you those as well. All right, so. all right. You know what my dad did have in seventy? I'm going to say this was nineteen seventy two, brand new. 
He had a frigging cow triple 750. Oh, wow. Yeah, That's two, awesome. two stroker, man. And that yep. thing, I heard him from 10 miles away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, that, the thing was it's like it, a tin can full of hornets coming at but you. But he, he, you know, it, it, he'll talk about it now and go back to that. And he said, man, I should have died on that bike. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I, oh, my God, totally. These, these bikes are, the older ones are scary. And if they're reliable, then they're not worth it. And especially that so. cow triple, man. That cow triple was oh, just God. sick. All right. Okay. Such Cool. So you work on bikes in your garage, and uh, yeah. and and you listen to Fade to Black, and you've yeah. got a family. You've got uh, your daughter, and wife and daughter, and so right there. What's your daughter's name, by the way? Lux. Lux. L U X. L U X. All right, Lux. Your dad is uh, saying hi to you live on the air. Okay, so she is. She's asleep. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll play it for her tomorrow or whenever it gets up on YouTube. Yeah. All right. Tell me what happens, Dylan. Uh, let's uh, okay. let's let this rip. Absolutely. All right. So it was uh, end of September, uh, beginning of October, more towards September. Um, live in a suburb called Bedford, pretty much like any other suburb. Um, and it was about 5.36 on a Sunday, um, and one of Lux's friends was over, and we were going to walk her home. She lived right around the block. Um, they got on their bikes, and I, they, of course, took off, and I started walking out of my driveway didn't, uh, and just started heading you know, towards the street. And I had this feeling. I didn't hear any voice or anything like that. I just had a feeling, and the feeling was turn around and look up. So I turned around and looked up, and at this point, Lux and her little friend have taken off around the corner, and they went to her friend's house. And I'm standing there at the end of my driveway looking over my house. And this is like, I said, 5.30 or 6. It's, you know, it's not sunny. It's not hazy. It's just kind of whatever. I look up, and what prompted me to call and tell you the story is because, you know, I've heard you talk about your contact in the desert experience and all that sort of stuff. Right. And until yesterday, I forget which show I was listening to, but you said chrome ball, and it kind of clicked. I was like, oh, my God, that's exactly what I saw. So when I looked up, and it's as if it said, hey, look at us. And prior to that, I'd been listening to, to you and a bunch of others, um, listening to a lot of Corey Good and watching and David Wilcock and all that sort of stuff, and talking about channeling and, and, and meditating on them and conscious contact with you know, other beings. So that's in my head in the forefront. So I'd been doing that a week or two prior. So I really believed that it was, you know, here we are, turn around and look. So I look up and I see this chrome ball. You still there? Oh, I'm listening. I'm on the okay, edge of sorry, my seat. Sorry. Okay. So I see this chrome ball. And the interesting thing was it was it was sectioned in two pieces. I mean, it was one sphere, but the bottom half was rotating one way and the top half was rotating another way. Okay. Gotcha. Um, it may, it was not, uh, hadn't been drinking anything like that to get that out of the way. Um, I, it was not a drone. It was not, you know, and it was just right there. I mean, I could see it as plain as day. I couldn't tell the size cause it was the only thing in the sky. Um, no clouds and it was just clear. And I just stood there and looked at it and it was amazing cause it was just, I got the feeling we're here, we always have been, we always will be, was was the feeling I got. It's just that I can't explain. I didn't hear that. It's just what I felt. So I just was sitting there staring at it, and Lex and a friend, like I said, were off and gone. My wife was in the house, and I didn't want to leave because it wasn't like I wanted to run. And, of course, I didn't have my phone on me, of course, in this situation. But I didn't have my phone because I was with my daughter, so no need for that. I was just standing there staring at it. And it didn't really occur to me to go get your camera and take a picture. It wasn't one of those. It was just more of a relaxed, calm feeling of, yeah, we're here. This is what you've been asking for. And here we are. So with that, I mean, I don't couldn't tell you maybe five minutes stood there and, and stared at it. And just like that, it disappeared. And it was like, okay. And then I just walked and went and got Lux, and we came back. I came in, I told my wife, I was like, told the whole story. She was like, oh, my God, why didn't you come get me? <laughs> I was like, well, right. it was kind of like I was frozen, if that makes any sense. Didn't lose any time, nothing like that. It was just kind of like an understanding. So, 
it's just amazing. I've never, and I was telling my father about this, and he was like, oh, yeah, I don't know if my, your mom and I ever told you, but we, they used to live in Queens in New York, and then we saw a ship over Manhattan and with four cops were with us that witnessed it in the, in the early 60s when they lived there. I was like, that's just amazing when you start talking about it. And, and I, I never knew that story about my dad. So. Well, let yeah. me, uh, okay, so let's, let's back up, Dylan, a couple of steps here. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I described mine as a chrome ball. That's what you saw, too, as well. Um, how far away do you think it was? Um, it was, like I said, it was hard to judge the distance, but it was probably, you know, um, I would say, yeah, gosh, I, I'm not a sports person, but I can tell you it's a football field away. <laughs> That's kind of like what I would say. It so, wasn't too far, and, but it wasn't extremely close. And I know that's vague, but I'm sorry. No, that's uh, fair enough. Uh, I have more questions, so don't even yeah, worry yeah. about it. And so, uh, Lux, yeah. they were on their bikes, right? Correct. Okay, so they they rode away from you. They didn't see this. Not at all. Not at all. Okay, so you, who were supposed to be a good dad and and walk them through, you, <laughs> I, I know. I caught that part, we by the way. Yeah, the, friend, huh, yeah. So. They, they disappeared. So, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, the if it was you're guessing a hundred yards away. Um, or a football field, is this directly above you? Were you looking up like at 12 o'clock? No, it was probably, um, no, it was like at the end of my driveway, I was looking towards my house, through my backyard, through the neighbors, and like, you know, probably five blocks, or not even, maybe like three blocks away behind my house and up, so... And, Not directly over my house, but, you know, near our house. Right, and it's so close. Now, what did you hear? Did you hear anything? I heard nothing. Nothing. It um, was just very calm, very serene, very just, there was nobody around, no cars passed. Wow, um, wow that's so cool. I mean, it's, I don't live in a super busy area, but right. it just, I didn't see anybody else. We have people walking in our neighborhood constantly, and because it's hilly and, and, there was, no one was around. It was really amazing. But that's how it happens, right? Okay, so... Of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Lux, um, them being on their bikes and them disappearing, um, and you are, you know, I'm trying to capture the moment here, and you're looking. Yeah, no, absolutely. With, with all of this going on at the same time, were you able to judge how how big this object was? I, honestly, I, I, I couldn't because it was so, I mean, it appeared there was no depth perception because it wasn't like in front of a tree or behind a tree or it was just like straight up in the sky and nothing around it. So it was, that was, it was frustrating because I was just, you know, after the fact I was thinking about it, and I was like, oh my gosh, I, I can't even tell how big this was. Right. And again, you know, I'm going to reset. No, I, no I, I don't. Yeah, I get it. I, I get it, my friend. Okay, so yeah. again, I'm going to reset. Lux and they're on their bikes, right? You're there. If they're on their bikes riding, I'm assuming it's, is it still daylight? What time is it? Oh, yeah, it's like 530, and it's September, so it's still completely daylight. Okay, here. so it's completely daylight. Were you able, yeah. when you say, again, I'm just trying to put all of this together so it's daylight no no no, absolutely it's daylight and when you say chrome uh and you're a mechanic right you do with motor, you, you know what chrome is right oh yeah was there yeah. a color to the chrome or was it a silver chrome it was more of a silver like a you know and i hate to use this as an analogy but like you know in the terminator whatever one that was that guy was liquid Right. It was like that. You couldn't see, yeah, because like chrome on motorcycles, it, it isn't like that. It was more of a silver, you know, shine to it. It wasn't reflecting anything. You couldn't see like the green of a tree on on it or anything like that. It was just, it was just silver. So chrome is, well, you know, my go-to of what I call it. 
Right. Okay. Now, when you first saw it, it was just one single chrome ball, but you describe this separation and w- w- with these other two objects, were they smaller chrome balls or, or what, what, what was going oh, on there? No, no, no. It was, it was one ball. And it, imagine it has a line in the middle to where it's separated. You know, like if you've got um, just like think of like a plastic uh, Easter egg, more or less. So you have that line. So one is part, one part of it, one half of it is spinning one way and the other half is spinning the other way. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's all one centrifuge, but it's spinning in opposite directions. And, and you could see this. Yes, that which because and the the reason I could see that is because this it was shining or not shining it was just kind of gleaming and you could tell that it, it was directionally spinning one way on the bottom and then the other way on the top. Wow! Wow! All right, yeah. now this is this is a pretty amazing sighting, by the way. Um, oh, do you, do, <laughs> do you, I, I know? Um, do you think now? Let's try to take some things off the list here. Do you think mm-hmm. there's a possibility that it was some type of a military drone or some type of military technology? And if it was, what was it doing over uh, Dallas? Over, Fort over Worth? suburbs. Right, yeah. right. Um, I, honestly, uh, Jimmy, I, I, it didn't seem, I mean, you know, I, I, I live, God, we're close to Bell Helicopter. Uh, we're close to... Um, Oh, Carswell is over in Fort Worth, west of us. So, you know what, who knows? But it didn't seem to have any working parts that, you know, as a layman or as as us that I'd be familiar with, unless, you know, this is something completely top secret that, of course, you're not going to tell us, but right. it didn't have, there was no turbines, there was no, you know, fans, there was no fins, there was no, it was just kind of a sphere. And that's it. And how it was, you know, flying was beyond anything I understand just as somebody on this planet that sees planes and that kind of stuff and understands technology. Right, right, right. Okay, so now let's take something else off the list. Do you think it was – is there a possibility that it was up really, really high and you weren't judging things correctly about its size and its depth and – could it have been uh, a satellite? Because I have seen what I think was a satellite. I'm not sure if it's a satellite or a UFO, but I certainly saw something position itself high up in the sky uh, one day. It's the there's a video of it. Uh, it's called the UFO. Uh, the 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 helpful <laughs> the helpful Honda guys and the UFO sighting, something like that online. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, do you think there's a possibility of that, or was it just too close to you? I know you say a hundred yards, and that's that's what's curious to me. You know, was it big well, enough I, for you some? Know what? I could be judging it wrong. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, the, but I don't think it was that far, honestly, because I could see the split in the sphere and the fact that the bottom was rotating one way and the top was rotating another way. If it was high up in a satellite, I don't think I would have been able to see that. So again, I mean, calling for how far away it was, you know, I don't know, but it's, you know, just to see that detail, I think it would have to have been closer than the satellite. Yeah. Right. Now, was it big enough for a pilot to be inside of it, you know, bodies or, 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 or was it more, uh, you know, uh, like unpiloted, like under intelligent control, maybe remote controlled? No, I think it was big enough to probably have a pilot in it. It was, it was, it was definitely large enough and high enough from what I could see, but not. I know that's totally vague, and it's just like it's just. I wish I had more, you know, of a depth of perception to see what it was like flying in front of a tree or whatever. But yeah, I would guess it would be big enough to have somebody or something in it, definitely. Now, I don't want to get crazy or sound weird here, but do you think because of, you know, listening to Fade to Black and having this type of thing on your mind and you're thinking about, do you think um, you invited this? Do you, you know, do you think this was for you? Uh, 100%. Right. And that's why I was saying, and I, I can I can tell you another little quick story book that, you know, is before this that happened to me that kind of, that made me understand that, yes, it was. 
Um, I definitely do because I was walking, like I said, with my back to it, with my back to my house, walking down my driveway, following Lux. And then I just kind of felt the turn around and I turned around and there it was. Very interesting. Was it perfectly round, by the way? Oh, completely. I mean, yeah, it was completely smooth. And, you know, like I said, the only part was the center that you could see where it was not I don't know if it was not connected, but it was two separate pieces, you know, spinning around in a ball. Wow, that is just nuts to me, Dylan. Nuts. Now, uh, we're going to head towards a break. So before we do that, and I don't want to cut you off, I want to thank you for for having the courage to call in tonight and and share this story. Of course. But. Take a picture next time, okay? That's, oh my that, God, that's <laughs> right. Right? Uh, um, is this how did it leave? I know you described it earlier, but but what happened at the end? It just okay. So it pretty much when I was saying basically, okay, I understand. It's over. Thank you. You know, kind of that kind of diatribe in my head, and it just was kind of like okay, and then boom, it just vanished. Like, it just, you know, went invisible or just disappeared, whatever. Uh, it, I think, while it I was, mean, honestly, I think it's a conscious contact thing. That right. If we think about these things and if we channel them, so to speak, I think they make themselves mad to us. Yeah, see, now you got to repeat. you got to rinse and repeat now. You got to get Lux. You got to get her friend. You got to be in the garage. You got to walk out on the street. You got to get them going down the road. You got to have your mind in the same spot. And, uh, gotcha. and of course, okay. hand on a cell phone, you know, <laughs> to be ready to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, and I, I know you're headed towards a break, so cut me off if you have to. But if you want to hear a strange story predating this, like by three weeks, and when I was starting to do all this, I was in Colorado, in Denver, and I was staying at a friend's house, and I had been thinking about this a lot and concentrating on it, and I fell asleep, and I had this dream that I was with my friend who I was there with in a convertible. We were driving through the Hollywood Hills, which I was completely, I used to live there, completely familiar with it, and we're driving through the Hollywood Hills. A sphere came down and picked me up out of his car, out of his convertible, and it was, I don't know if this is listening to Corey Good all the time, it was a blue avian, but the avian face was a lot softer than he described, and it just embraced my head, and and I was just saying, oh, my God, no, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, and then, boom, I woke up. Whoa. All right. That so, sounds and like... And then, the next how- night, there was a giant white bird outside my window. Really? Yeah. So I was like... I'm now freaked out, and I, you know, that was it. Yeah, that I came back and had that experience. Yeah, that'll stop me in my tracks every time. I don't know if you've ever heard me tell the uh, uh, the white bird story. Um, I have not. Okay, well, no. when we come back after the break, I'll drop that on you. But what you should do is is next week, uh, Dylan, uh, call in and 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 give us the full rundown of the Hollywood Hills. That sounds like a really, really good experience. Thank you so much again for having hey, the courage. Thank you. To come I appreciate in. all you guys do. And I, I really enjoy listening to y'all. So. All right. Now go work on that 354. <laughs> I will definitely. I'll t- thank you so much. Wow. Thank you, Jimmy. I appreciate it. Have a good night. You too, Dylan. What a great experience. His daughter's name is Lux. How cool is that? This is fade to black open lines Thursday night, fader night. I'm your host, Jimmy church. More of your phone calls next. Stay with us. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk. Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRARadio.com ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carson, el tiburón Y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio Claro que sí Oh, fall My favorite time of year Cooler temperatures and, well, let's be honest Layers, lots and lots of layers Look, I get it We all have that favorite hoodie Matter of fact, I've got a few favorite hoodies You should wear yours, enjoy it I do 
But I stay focused on my health year-round. And for me, I take Nature's Youth RSF from naturesyouth.com. Nature's Youth RSF from naturesyouth.com. I eat right, control my portion sizes, still maintain a commitment to regular fitness, and I get plenty of rest, and I take Nature's Youth RSF. It's okay to cover up your beach body for a few months, but don't just forget about it. Nature's Youth understands exactly what it means to provide top-quality health products, and Nature's Youth customers not only improve their health, they know they're also providing their body with the right nourishment to maintain peak performance levels and fight the aging process. So layer up and get started today with Nature's Youth RSF. Nature'sYouth.com. Simple to use, even simpler to order. Go to Nature'sYouth.com. That's Nature'sYouth.com. You are listening to Fate to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back, Fade to Black. Thursday night, Fader night, 323-825-5045. Thank you, Dylan. What a great, great sighting. And uh, a couple of things. I want to get back to the petition really quick. But uh, I'm looking at this uh, image that uh, Mark Tarana uh, just posted up. Uh, we, We posted that originally. Oh, man. That was like... I want to say we did that like four years ago, three years ago. Um, but that's what I was thinking of. Exactly. Uh, we have high res images of this that were sent to us. Um, uh, we've got those somewhere. Rita, Rita can probably uh, get those up. Rita, the one with the ring around it. Uh, we've got that somewhere. And we've got another one too. I was thinking about when he said the line too, um, that we posted up years ago, years ago, definitely made me uh, think of those. Thank you for posting that. Uh, let me get this retweeted. That's exactly what I was thinking, Mark. Thank you for that. I don't know how you found it. That's uh, pretty cool. Um, yeah, what a great sighting. So, yeah, anybody else in uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, somebody just said, did he make a a, Uf- a MUFON report about it? And I forgot to ask him. But uh, you're absolutely right. That's uh, when you find out if there are other people that are having the same sighting as you or maybe – um, in, uh, uh, not only in Dallas, but, but possibly in another state, but something that was, uh, very similar, great, great sighting, great experience. Thank you for that, Dylan. All right. Now back to the petition. All right. So the petition on we, the people, um, over at whitehouse.gov, uh, which is called full disclosure. Now reveal and declassify 100 year old classified Tesla patents for free energy motors. All right, so we have got this up now. It's over on uh, both of our Facebook pages, and uh, we've got it up here on Twitter. We'll, we will continue to uh, push this. But um, it's uh, got a lot of action already over on Facebook, and I'm watching here on Twitter, too, as well. Um, thank you, everybody. Just share it. Go like it, share it, and, and get it out. But what I am seeing here from all of the posts uh, and the comments um, on all of the pages is that everybody is like the first signature, <laughs> right? The signature. And uh, it, so I don't think the counter is showing right now. I mean, too many people have signed this right now. So I, I'm not sure how that updates. Um, it is an official uh, White House petition. Um, at whitehouse.gov. So we should see uh, signature numbers start to pop up here and fl- flood in. Um, we are not, Fade to Black, we are not the creators of this. We were sent this immediately today after it was generated. And uh, like I said, I don't know if uh, the um, uh, 
uh, the the person that created it if they want our, it, their name out there. But I will do it. The reason why I'm looking at the email here, and the email is signed with, uh, 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 <laughs> I don't want to even say, uh, with symbols. So, um, and I see the name in the email. So if you don't want your name out there, uh, I, I would love for you to have credit for it. We didn't, we didn't create it. I wish that we did because, uh, I think, uh, Rita says, uh, we can use initials F B. All right. There you go. All right. We'll just do it that way. Um, so please sign, share. We've got it up. It is accessible. Get it out there. Okay, everybody. And we're going to tweet it out a couple of more times during the show, and uh, we will keep this pushing. Okay? All right. Where am I? Oh, I just dropped that call. Okay. Sorry about that. Area code 949. I apologize. I think that was me. I'll put you at the front of the list, so I'll wait for you to call back. And until you do, um, uh, which will pop in now, two days ago, President Donald Trump, signed executive actions to advance approval of the Keystone XL and Dakota Access Oil Pipelines. Yeah. And I held off talking about this because, you know, this, this again, this I'm anti-Trump or pro-Trump or anything. I'm not here to criticize or, or do anything. I want him to get his feet on the ground and 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 try to get some stuff done out there before uh you know I bring down the hammer or not you know you never know right okay well the decision to advance the pipelines cast aside you know all of those efforts by Barack Obama and that administration to block construction of the two pipelines and this effectively shut down the victory of the protesters who wanted to speak with Trump about the Dakota Access pipeline to prevent him from approving the final phase of construction, but that didn't get done. His transition team said it would review the decision to delay completion once he took office on January 20th. Well, he didn't waste any time. And I don't know how I feel about this. I, I just, I, I, I don't. I understand his, his pitch, American steel to build the pipes and let's, you know, put people back to work. And that's, I, I get that. And I, I understand that spin, but bypassing and curtailing and, and the permits and, and other things and the environment and the protest, everything that was such a success is now just been completely curtailed. So I don't, I don't know how to feel about this. So I'm going to, I'm going to let this stew, but yesterday he signed to build a wall. All right. We knew that was coming. Today, Mexico's president canceled its meeting next week with Trump. Now, say what you want. Say what you want. Positive, negative. I don't care. Say what you want. It's a free country. But things are definitely not boring at the moment. And I have never seen this kind of rapid fire executive order signing frenzy at the front of anybody's administration like we have we have seen this week. Um, pretty amazing to watch. And let's see how this stuff kind of plays out. I'm, I'm right now, I am, I'm, I'm in shock and awe mode. I'm just in shock and awe mode. All right. Well, on that note, President Donald Trump and his press secretary, Sean Spicer, came under fire over Twitter on Twitter, over Twitter, after it was revealed, and this is where things for me get a little bit dicey, it was revealed that he was using Trump Gmail for his official account. <laughs> it's like, wait, wait, wait a minute. Pump the brakes on this truck, folks. Spicer appeared to tweet his password for Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw that first half and I'm like, what is this? Right? I saw it. He, he he tweeted out his password. Obviously, somebody was asking him from Twitter uh, what his password was or to reset it. And Sean Spicer, not knowing either how to tweet or how to <laughs> change his password, is tweeting back to Twitter his password on Twitter, which went out to everybody. Twice, apparently, too. Once yesterday, once today. Well, anyway. Trump was busted when it was uncovered that his POTUS handle, POTUS, 
was linked to an ordinary Gmail account. Gmail. Now, after everything that went down with that personal email server of Hillary's and all of that, man, FBI, this, that, that Trump is using a Gmail account for his Twitter account? Seven days into the presidency, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, you just got to call it. And if you are going to do and be the person that you say that you are, what are you doing with the Gmail account on your POTUS Twitter account? Somebody explain to me how that is possible. Well, as you can see in his tweet, anyone can view part of the email used in the default Twitter password recovery menu. Several screenshots were shared today and showing the email link to POTUS, which was a Gmail account. Now, who did this today? I'm going to give credit right now. Alex Zalbin, the managing editor of TV Guide. He's just a guy, right? He, he's, he does a, he's not just a guy. He does a lot of things. Uh, 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 um, uh, but, but anyway, his main gig is the managing editor over at TV Guide. I think he does TV.com, too, as well. So Alex tweeted this out today with the screenshots showing the POTUS account linked to Gmail. And he wrote straight back to POTUS. He's like, dude, what are you doing with the Gmail account? And it was there for the whole world to see. That's what happened this morning. After the news had spread across social media, the email addresses associated with the president, the vice president, the first lady, had all been changed from Gmail to the secure White House email addresses. And I'm just going to say, with everything that went down with that email server last year, and, and you go through and you're sworn in the inauguration on Friday at 12 noon, why wasn't everything just changed over? Allegedly, you gave up your Android, which you didn't, by the way. You've been tweeting with that Android. But but shouldn't have everything been nice and secure and buttoned up with all of the hacking and and things that are going on around the world right now? What are you doing with a Gmail account and without the security, uh, the built-in security stuff with Twitter activated? You were just using a two-step security. Anybody could have, as it turns out, hacked the POTUS email account for the last seven days or Twitter account. Absolutely incredible. Incredible. Seven days, man. Seven days it ran like this. A Gmail account, which I, by the way, I'm looking at it right here. <laughs> I'm looking at the actual Gmail account. Had I known, had I known, I would have had some fun with that. All right. Let's uh, 323-825-5045. 5045 If you were. In San Diego, two days ago on Tuesday at 3 p.m., we do want to hear from you. Did you hear the booms? Did the ground shake? What happened to you at 3 p.m. in San Diego? Give us a call, 323-825-5045. San Diego area code comes in. You go to the front of the line. Uh, we posted pictures today, by the way. There's a new entry in the ancient bug stuck in amber category. A 100-million-year-old bulbous eyed alien looking insect with an ET head and an extremely wide field of vision was discovered. Now, uh, I'm going to pop over here to Twitter really quick because I know you guys are going to start retweeting these pictures. They are absolutely incredible. And a few things of note about this particular insect. It's a triangle head. There are lots of triangle headed insects. But they're inverted. In other words, the flat side is the flat side of the triangle is on the shoulders. That's what's connected to the body of the insect. Not this, where the point of the triangle, the ET chin, if you will, is what's on the neck side. And it is incredible. If this doesn't look like, well, anyway, it was found in Myanmar. By George, uh, by George Poinar, Jr., Oregon State University entomology professor emeritus. The bug, a wingless female, 
is such a bizarre, unique find that it has become a new insect order unto itself. Here it is right here. I'm, I'm retweeting it right now. Follow me on Twitter, at JChurch Radio, hashtag F2B, and then you can check this out for yourself. Look at this. That's an amber. Look at that thing. And I, when I first saw it, it looked like an ant, right? But it's not. Look at the legs. Okay, so it's not that. Um, I don't know how they determine it's female, right? But they do. But look at the head. Is that insane? Now that's the full body shot. Now look at the look at the head shot. That's crazy. And they say this is it. This is the only version that they have ever seen with an insect with a triangle head with the with the eyes where they are here on any insect. So that's it. It's a brand new species. And looking at this image, I keep waiting for this thing to say, you know, take me to your leader. Seriously. <laughs> That's what I see. That is crazy, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. In amber. So, yeah, today I ended up going and uh, looking at uh, a bunch of things in amber, uh, which there are thousands and thousands of images on the net. But there's only one like this. This thing is absolutely incredible. 100 million years old. Yeah, that's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Well, all right. A couple of things. Um, also, uh, we've got the images up. Rita uh, showed this to me and said, "This, you've got to check this out. In the late 19th century, the archaeologist um, Jalmar Stolpe spent years excavating grave sites near Burka, a town on the Swedish island of Bjorko. Bjork, right? Bjorko. That operated as the key center for trade during the Viking Age. In a grave of a woman buried in the 9th century, his excavations recovered a silver-colored ring with a purple stone, which is now in the collections of the Swedish History Museum. Researchers confirmed this week that the ring, which is engraved with Arabic script, provides a rare physical evidence of contact between Vikings and the Islamic world. Why? Because the inscription written in Kufic Arabic, in script that was common between the 8th and 10th centuries, reads Il Lala which the research team translated as four or two Allah. You have to see this ring. And what was it doing in the possession of a Viking woman that it was buried with her? It's incredible. And this is something that it's, it's real. And the, uh, as it turns out, I think Rita pointed out to me that the, uh, uh, it was glass. Here it is here. Thank you, Mark. Look at that. Is that incredible? And it turns out that's not a precious stone. That is actual glass, which is also pretty trippy if you think about it. There you go. There it is, even on a laptop. Full disclosure now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Justin. Everybody go and sign the petition. We have the links up. They're over on Facebook. And uh, we've got them up here on Twitter. Yeah, I was thinking um, all of this. You guys are uh, posting. <laughs> so that's it. We get praying madness uh, for the uh, for the rest of the day, right? Three two three eight two five five zero four five. All right. Here's another crazy story for you. Have you ever stashed money in your mattress? Have you? I have. Do you have money in your mattress right now? Well, a Brazilian man hid. Oh, Rita says the counter on the petition still says one. <laughs> All right. So let me see here. How many uh, signatures do I have just off of uh, Facebook already? Uh, it looks like about... Let me add this up. I don't know. Okay, so 50 here. 
Let me jump over to the radio page. It's only been up for uh, 15 minutes. Okay, so over on the radio page, 515. Okay, so 515. Uh, yeah, 515 currently. And there you go. Um, Sean says, I'm signature number two. Do you know how many people have said that they are signature number two? A lot. <laughs> so we'll check. Maybe it resets at midnight. Um, it was uh, it was just uh, created today on the 26th. How interesting. All right, but we've got 515 just over on one page, another 50 over on the other. That's just the rough counter that I can do now. And then plus Twitter. Uh, Twitter right now is showing 333. So we should have easily 1,000 signatures here uh, by the end of the show tonight. I, that's just what I'm showing here. Okay, man, if I see one more praying mantis, th those things freak me out. Okay, where was I? Let me back up. Have you ever stashed money in a mattress? Well, a Brazilian man hid $20 million cash that authorities say was related to a massive pyramid scheme. The United States Attorney's Office said that the suspect, um, Kleber Rene Rosario Roca, flew from Brazil to the U.S. a few days ago to meet a person who is a cooperating witness in the pyramid scheme case. Roca and the witness met at a restaurant in Hudson, Massachusetts. There, the witness gave Roca a suitcase filled with $2.2 million in cash. Federal agents followed Roca to an apartment complex in Westboro, Massachusetts, where they, had, where they arrested him. Later that night, the agents searched the apartment and found the cash packed in the box spring of a mattress. Now, I, there, there are pictures of this posted up right now over on Twitter. I need you to go and look at this. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's not on Twitter. It's over here. All right. Somebody post the picture of this mattress. This mattress, it's the box springs underneath, is stuffed with cash. And when I say stuffed, it is of the extreme sense. I mean, I cannot believe I've never seen this much money in one place. And this was in an apartment. I don't know what he was intending to do with it after that or what is going on here, but there you go. So we posted this uh, yesterday, and it's it's really funny. 5,600 people saw this picture, and I have no idea, man, which, which it, what went through your mind. But it did. It went through mine. All right. And in order to get rid of the web of fake news... All right, sit down, relax, and listen to this. Google banned nearly 200 publishers from its advertising network in the fourth quarter of 2016, according to the company's annual bad ads report released yesterday. The crackdown came specifically in the months of November and December following a change of policy for Google's ad network, AdSense, which is designed to punish sites that intentionally misrepresent who they are in order to deceive readers, you know, to make money. The updated policy led to the review of 550 sites, including a considerable amount that were masquerading as legitimate news organizations. Google reported it took action against 340 of those sites and permanently banned about 200 of the violators from its advertising platform. The company also suspended more than 1,300 accounts for tabloid cloaking, a practice that became increasingly popular back in 2016. The scam involves creating ads that purport to be news and information, only to send users to a site trying to sell a questionable product when clicked. The ads were often targeted around current events. But, strangely enough, Google Google did not provide a fake news list or, or name any of the offenders. And then today, 
Oh, man, I don't want to go back into this too far. But today, oh, man, today it, there was a, there was an interview. I don't want to say names. There was an interview that was on the New York Times with one of uh, uh, Clinton's or uh, one of uh, Clinton's, one of Trump's advisors and uh, saying that news, the media is the the enemy here. The enemy is not the Democratic Party. Right, the oppo- the opposition is the media, and and the fake news that is out there, and this is coming from the founder of Breitbart, and it just rubbed me the wrong way. And then today, after all of this coming out with the fake news, then it was released today that uh, Alex Jones, who we love, we love Alex, but Alex, Alex got press credentials for the White House. <laughs> And so did uh, uh, Jim Hoft, right? Okay, all right. So let's let's not talk about Jim. That's a whole other story. But um, Alex Jones got press credentials today to the White House. And he had said today, now John Rappaport was on Alex Jones today. That's great. InfoWars, awesome. And uh, one day, you know, uh, maybe Alex and I will trade off and, and, and be on each other's shows. And, and that's great. There's a mutual respect there. But that being said, Alex Jones in the press room at the White House, is this a good thing? And what I mean by that is that's fine. I'm happy for him. But th- is is that where we're going to steer here? for respect out of the White House, that they only want to deal with somebody like, like you know, Breitbart and, and, and InfoWars. I'm a little uncomfortable with that. I think that by the White House coming back at us and saying it's okay for the conspiracy guys or the, the alt-right guys or the extreme alt-left, you know, that that is what we're going to deal with. But everybody else is an enemy of the state. Well, quite honestly, everybody needs to have access. Everybody needs to ask their own questions and report their own way and report back to the people that read uh, and listen to and watch those news outlets. Because everybody was caught with their pants down and, and getting involved and wrapped up in fake news in 2016, everybody was guilty of it. And there were a lot of guilty parties out there creating the fake news, and though some of them are advisors to to Trump today. I think we are just at the brink of some really crazy stuff going on. I would love for Alex Jones to ask questions. If that has never happened before. But to have this happen like this and the way that it is and that everybody else is the enemy – and and we're going to focus over here, it just makes me feel uncomfortable in general. I think everybody should have access. Not only Alex Jones, <laughs> Jim Hoft, <laughs> but everybody. So there you go. This is Fade to Black. I'm going to open up the phones right now. 323-825. Are you kidding me, Rita? Really? 323-825-5045. I just read the craziest news ever in the history of this program. I'll be right back. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Metal God, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. KGRA Radio. Intelligent Talk. You've probably heard about all the great benefits of goat milk soap. But did you know, some companies take shortcuts. At Old New England Soap, we make our organic goat's milk soap using 36% goat's milk. That's 17% more than most others. Our bars are larger, so they last longer, producing lots of lather packed with vitamins. And our soap is a natural moisturizer that smooths dry and damaged skin. Order online at oldnesoap.com. That's oldnesoap.com. You've tried the rest. Now try the best. Oldnesoap.com. Water-based soaps on supermarket shelves use harsh chemical acids to break down dead skin cells. 
and that's just not good for you. At Old New England Soap, our soaps are made without chemical ingredients, contain no alcohol or petroleum products, and use 85% organic materials and carry the USDA's organic certification. Try some today. Go to oldnesoap.com. That's oldnesoap.com. Oldnesoap.com. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. If you have sciatica, then you know all about the crippling pain that travels from your lower back down your leg when a spasm occurs. It's brutal. In fact, it's enough to take your breath away. Dr. Zhang's sciatica nerve cream helps relieve persistent, shooting pains associated with the sciatic nerve in the lower back and legs. This natural, homeopathic cream contains the most potent ingredients to soothe even the most excruciating pain associated with sciatica. Stop the pain now. Ask for Dr. Zhang's sciatica nerve cream at your local health food store or go online to trasknutrition.com. Would you like relief from muscle pain, headaches, and discomfort to sleep better, have more energy during the day, and just feel naturally amazing? Fibromalic can help. Its blend of malic acid and magnesium can provide pain relief and comfort for those who experience fibromyalgia. It helps your body absorb more oxygen, and it works quickly for a significant reduction in pain within 48 hours, all without a prescription. Ask for Fibromalic at health and vitamin shops or shop Fibromalic.com. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony, damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. Open lines, 323-825-5045. 323-825-5045. It's open lines right now. All right. Kas- uh, uh, Kaspersky Labs, Russia's biggest cybersecurity firm, confirmed yesterday that its manager in charge of investigating hacking attacks Ruslan Stoyanov, who I did a big expose on last month, was arrested in December. Reports published earlier in Russia's uh, Kommersant newspaper also said that Stoyanov was arrested along with senior Russian Federal Security Service, the FSB intelligence officer, and that they both face charges of treason. Stoyanov was said to have actively worked with the FSB, and his arrest may have been linked to arrest of one of the FSB department heads. Now, the expose that I had done last month on Stoyanov, well, Stoyanov said that he had gone and and watched uh, Russian hackers uh, shut down uh, uh, the websites and, and some areas in uh, the Ukraine. And they showed how this malware could be used, and he was a witness to it. And now he's been arrested. And it was just announced yesterday. So he's been locked up now for uh, over a month because he was a whistleblower. 
and there's more to this story as it develops, but this is this is uh, extremely dangerous grounds. Um, and then then I have this. Now check this out. We have here in Southern California, uh, we have had now just about a month straight of rain. Certainly the last two and a half weeks, we've had rain nearly every single day, uh, except for today. It let up finally. And I look at, uh, I look around and I think about, uh, you know, where we live and what's going on. And we've had all this rain. And a couple of uh, years ago, I reported here on this show that uh, the city of Burbank, uh, where we broadcast from, had cut a deal with a uh, with a, a cloud seeding company uh, that would uh, that has installed ten different distribution points here along the foothills uh, to see the clouds and bring in rain here to the valley. Right? Okay. Now this was public. This was public. Now, I don't know what was going on in the skies, and it seems that uh, uh, more than once uh, Rita and I were out looking at the skies, and we see these planes come by, and there's there's some crazy chemtrail action, and we, we have had these extreme heat uh, changes. You know, like a really cold day, and then suddenly it's really hot, or it's really hot, and the next day it's really cold, or... You know, there's not not a cloud in the sky, and suddenly it's raining, right? It's been happening. So I know, and you know, the uh, the uh, the city of Burbank um, has talked about this publicly, and and so I know that it goes on. And now we've had all of this record record rainfall just coming in over the Sierras, the Sierra Nevadas, and and San, from San Francisco all the way through Southern California down to San Diego. Crazy torrential rain. And uh, so with all of that, check this out. And just when you think that, you know, Dane uh, uh, Wigington and, and the people that talk about chemtrails and what's going on in the man- manipulation of our weather, comes this story out of China. China plans to dish out $168 million to manipulate its skies with chemtrails. This is a press release. The goal is to make it rain over the country's dry northwestern provinces. The the budget, which was approved by the National Development and Reform Commission, covers the cost of, check this out, four new planes, upgrades for eight new aircraft, and 897 new rocket devices. Plus, nearly 2,000 currently inventoried rocket devices that are ready to go will be connected to digital control systems. China has adopted a few different methods to actually modify the weather. One of those methods uses rockets or other aircraft to plant seeds in the clouds with dry ice to prompt rainfall. But more recently... China has experimented with shooting chemicals such as silver iodide into the clouds to induce rain. They've gone public with this. It's going down right now. And the way that the weather has changed here in Southern California and and what has been going on off of the coast and in the valley here itself, here in the valley, You need to understand why we call this the valley, if you've never been to uh, Southern California. The San Fernando Valley, where we uh, broadcast from, we are at the uh, west end of the valley, the southwest end. The valley itself is about 50 miles wide, okay, east to west. It is ringed on all four sides with mountains, So just picture a giant version of a football stadium. That's basically what we have here, except for it's 50 miles wide. And it's about, uh, oh, man, it depends on what part, but about 10 miles uh, tall. It's about 10 miles from one end of the valley to the other. And then 50 miles on the other side. So a big oval, a a big arena. And so we're surrounded by mountains. And what happens with that is everything gets trapped here. Sometimes you get wind and stuff, and and it'll clear things out. But nothing comes in and nothing goes out. 
and and also because of that, the clouds, right? They're just it's it, it, a lot of days. It's non-existent during the summer. The heat stays here. It's trapped. It's locked in, right? And that's what we have. So we have this crazy uh, fishbowl type of uh, uh, climate and atmosphere, but it's also prime to uh, to mess with right to manipulate and now this 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 situation that we've had over the, the this last month i've never seen any i haven't seen anything like this since the early 90s when we had the floods in the valley and that was pretty crazy too as well no question that that was probably manipulated but then we went through this extreme dry spell and now we're getting these floods i mean just floods of clouds coming in off of the pacific it's crazy it's absolutely nuts. Oh, man. All right. So we've got that going on, and uh, it's pretty interesting. Also, this was just posted. Giant carnivorous dinosaurs appear to have roamed South America for millions of years longer than previously believed, and a huge footprint has been discovered to prove it. We've got this over on our Facebook page, too, as well. Scientists say the print, which was found in the Maragua crater of central Bolivia, measures some 1.2 meters or nearly four feet wide. It is the largest footprint of a carnivorous dinosaur ever discovered. They believe it was left by the Abelosaurus, a meat-eating biped that lived in South America during the late Cretaceous period, being uh, between 60 and 80 million years ago. It is the largest footprint ever discovered, and it is huge. It's absolutely huge. All right. Uh, let's see here. Where am I? I want to know your thoughts on the UFO one doc you talked about. I don't, I don't, I, I, I kind of expressed it at the beginning of the show. Um, my thoughts are, are, are strange with it because of the date, which is July 8th, 1947. The, the, uh, the idea of a, a laboratory being in, uh, on board, um, uh, defense weapons on board, a control area on board. These are very specific things to have been discussed. Now, also in this uh, document, they say that this information came from a, a supernatural source, which is also very strange. I'm not sure what to make of that. But this is also 1947, when a lot of these things just weren't discussed. The whole flying saucer wave, which happened, uh, uh, well, sort of, this was the beginning of the period, and, and Kenneth Arnold and so forth. But all of the science fiction films and everything else didn't happen until the early 50s, uh, you know, through throughout the 50s, this kind of talk. But this this was all timed in July of 1947. I don't know when the paper itself was written before it was distributed, but uh, the 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 thoughts and and uh, the technology that was presented here was very very advanced, and it was also the same situation that was discussed um, in the Roswell press release, which happened on the day that Walter Haupt. Um, had prepared on July 8th. The timing of it is is just strange. And we have two different, we have uh, the military with the Army doing their press release, and this was an internal FBI document. But they both have the same date. When you go to uh, the FBI vault and you look at the specific document, you'll see it right there, July 8th, 1947. Right? And and you go to, just go to Wikipedia, look up Roswell. I'm sure it says right there that the press release was July 8th, 1947. These dates are in the front of my brain. Now, so the other strange part, and this is where I think that there is something going on here. The other strange part is this. We're talking about 1947. Okay. You had telephones. And that's about it. There wasn't anything rapid fire. There was no breaking news on television. There wasn't anything going on. You had radio was about as quick as you got to everything. And that stuff had to be put into place. 
So the Army Corps of Eng- or the Army, the Army uh, Press Corps, and that release uh, 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 with Walter Hout, Public Affairs Office, they wouldn't have known about the FBI document that was released on the very same day, right? And the, and the same goes for the FBI. They wouldn't have known what Walter Hout was preparing. But both documents are nearly the same. Flying saucer, flying disc, right? Yeah, that's that's what that's it's the date. That's the most interesting point for me. Two different two different military agent, two different government agencies talking about the exact same thing, distributing a document. One was a press release. One was an internal memorandum uh, for the for the FBI dealing with the same exact subject matter on the very same day. That's what's interesting. I don't know what to make of it. I, I I really, really don't. Absolutely interesting. All right. Uh, I'm going to take a break right here. It's a little premature, but I'm going to reset uh, my phone software here. I want to make sure that everything is running right. All right. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. 323-825-5045. I'll be right back. Balance of Nature's Fruits and Veggies. I had gout in both my knees, and it's gone. Uh, well, I'm pretty stupid. I should have ordered it, like, you know, 15 years ago. Best really? thing I ever got in my... It's, it's the most effective product that I've ever bought in my life. He had eczema on his hand, and it cracked and it cracked for years. Mm-hmm. He did anything from doctor, every cream, everything. And three months on the veggies and fruit, mm-hmm. it was gone. They're just awesome. They keep asking me, what am I doing? I told them what I did with my cholesterol. I had the blood test, right? And it went down 100 points. 262, now it's 162. Everything is just perfect. Call now to find out how to get your free month's supply of Balance of Nature. Call 800-2468-751. That's 800-2468-751. Call now, 800-2468-751. Or go online to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code TSL. Would odors, mold, and mildew describe your basement or crawl space? It doesn't have to be that way. Transform them into a fresh, healthy, usable one with the technologically advanced Wave Moisture Control Units. The computerized operation maximizes moisture control and also expels harmful radon, combustion gases, and numerous other pollutants. Dehumidifiers are old technology that do nothing for air quality and waste energy. Wave units are intelligent, self-monitoring, do not need maintenance, and will save you hundreds in electricity. Wave units are still running effectively effectively over 15 years. They've been tested and installed in public and military housing and by property managers nationwide. Buy a unit now, and if your home is not fresher and drier, you can return it for a full refund for up to 12 months. What have you got to lose? Call now. 1-888-618-WAVE. 1-888-618-WAVE. Or visit MyDryHome.com. That's MyDryHome.com. Home Solutions for a healthy, comfortable home. What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full-range boomboxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this. It's amazing. It's just $129 and use the promo code JCRTWS 
and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go back, Lee Tappy. Oh, It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com All right, welcome back. Pay to Black. Phones are reset. 323-825-5045. I've been looking at this UFO 1 document over on the FBI uh, website in their vault section. It is very interesting. And did you get a chance to read it and check it out? Uh, I do want to hear from you. 323-825-5045. It's a very interesting document. The uh, the points that were made here, uh, the nine points... Uh, part of the disc carry crews. Others are under remote control. Think about Dylan's phone call earlier tonight um, when I asked him about that very specific question. You know, to, did did your object that you saw, was it large enough for somebody to be in it or do you think it was under remote control? He thinks it was big enough. The object that I saw over at Contact in the Desert that was uh, a couple of miles away, and it was large. My, I, I have no idea. When I ask uh, uh, witnesses that, that, that question, you know, how big do you think it was? I have to go back and think uh, what was running through my mind at contact in the desert. I'm looking at this object. It's obviously a couple of miles away, but if it is that big from that distance— I don't know. It must have been 100 or 200 feet in diameter, right? That's what I saw. Dylan couldn't quite gauge it, and I get that. I totally get that because, for me, I'm a little bit confused, too, as well. You know, that whole depth of field thing, and it's at night. You know, what I could make out was that it was a chrome ball. And and when we went back to Google and I looked at maps of the area, and I saw the mountain range off in the uh, the distance, and I could see it right there. I could look at it and look at the scale. It was two, two and a half miles away from where we were standing. So that means that object must have been huge, right? So here in this UFO 1 document, part, uh, part of the disk carry crews. Others are under remote control. Very interesting. What do you think about that? This is 1947. And then this the statement here, their mission is peaceful. The visitors contemplate settling on this plane. They want to come here and live. This, you know, again, this is 1947. And the next line, uh, which is so interesting, especially with uh, uh, not only witnesses, but experiencers that talk about this. These visitors are human-like, but much larger in size. You know, again, for for members, you know, if you were in the FBI in 1947 and you're reading this, what is going through your mind? You know, this was openly talked about. Very interesting. And then, uh, again, the next line, we are not excarnate. We are not we are not Earth people, but we come from another world, right? Their own, and this is where it gets it gets strange because we talk about interdimensional uh, situations here today, right? They do not come from a planet as we use the word. But they come from an, an, an etheric planet, which, it, which interpenetrates uh, with our own and is not perceptible to us. What is being said here? This is 1947. They don't come from a planet as we use the word. 
This is an amazing document, and it says so many things. And this could have been something that was distributed today, and we would understand it. The bodies of the visitors and the craft automatically materialize on entering the vibratory rate of our dense matter. We're talking about frequencies here. Somebody had uh, said to me the other day, I got an email, and uh, somebody had said, Jimmy, you're, you're a musician, and you talk about frequencies all the time because you understand frequencies. Uh, uh, musicians understand what frequencies are. But frequency is uh, a misused word today. Everybody talks about frequencies, and they may not understand what they're what they are speaking about. They they may not understand what a frequency is. Uh, before I get to a break, you know what? Let's go to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hello. Yeah, you're live right now. All right. Well, actually, I just uh, sent you a tweet out. I was listening to you, so I'll find you to you there. Um, this is ran into your uh, show randomly on Twitter. Um, keep up the good work. I, I don't really necessarily have too much to say right now other than to say that I find you to be a session of uh, Black Bear. Um, I, I'm hoping that more and more people like you and independent media continue to speak up uh, because we're in an age where... <laughs> The truth is being nullified by a bunch of liars on mass uh, mainstream media. My name is uh, Tildros, uh the Third. I just sent you a tweet. So, all so right. To keep any uh, talk and keep keep up the good work. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm looking at your tweet right here. Thank you, my friend. All right, God bless. Yeah, absolutely. Right back at you. Yeah, <laughs> much more in the media uh, to to speak about this. That's what we all want, no doubt. And uh, thank you for that. Um, and you know what? You're going to get a, well, let's see here. Oh, you just followed me. The word, the tweet go. There it is. All right. There you go. Just got retweeted just like that. Thank you so much. Um, the, uh, the talk about frequencies, I understand frequencies and I understand vibrations and the, the one point, not only in light, but also in audio, there's something crazy that happens in audio. When you match a, a frequency, it, it uh, cancels itself out and will disappear. That's how noise canceling headphones work or noise canceling in a car, right? That's why a car is really quiet. You get it. You don't hear the engine, right? Uh, on the modern cars. But And the same thing, the same principles work in light as do in audio. I understand frequencies. I know what we can hear. I know what we can see. I know what we can't see. But I also know that if you are altered and you, you are taken out of a, a frequency, we don't see anything. There are so many ranges of light. We only see a small sliver of the light, uh, uh, everything that is available out there. Infrared, we know we don't see these things. Right? Okay? And certain things dogs can hear and they can smell that we can't. And it's the same thing. So when we're dealing with frequencies, and I'm talking about frequencies, I know exactly what I'm dealing with here. And if you're going to dial yourself up and, and come into our vibration where we are here, we see things. And so for this to be pointed out here, that uh, uh, they reenter at will and disappear from our vision without a trace. That's exactly what's going on today. Absolutely. There's no question about it, but this is 1947 and you need to look at it in those terms. And then there's this statement. The disc possess a type of radiant energy or array, which will easily disintegrate any attacking ship. They re-enter the uh, etheric at will and so simply disappear from our vision without a trace. The region that w for which they come from is not the astral plane, but corresponds to the locus or the talus. Students of the esoteric matters will understand these terms. This is amazing stuff to say in 1947. All right, I'm going to take a quick break. We're at the bottom of the hour. i got to time this stuff out correctly. All right, phone systems reset. Thank goodness I can wipe my brow there. 323-825-5045. 323-825-5045. I do want to hear your thoughts on this UFO one doc. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I'll be right back. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford. 
with the Metal Guard on JimmyChurchRadio.com. KGRA Radio. Intelligent Talk. You've probably heard about all the great benefits of goat milk soap. But did you know, some companies take shortcuts. At Old New England Soap, we make our organic goat's milk soap using 36% goat's milk. That's 17% more than most others. Our bars are larger, so they last longer, producing lots of lather packed with vitamins. And our soap is a natural moisturizer that smooths dry and damaged skin. Order online at oldnesoap.com. That's oldnesoap.com. You've tried the rest. Now try the best. OldNESoap.com. Water based soaps on supermarket shelves use harsh chemical acids to break down dead skin cells. And that's just not good for you. At Old New England Soap, our soaps are made without chemical ingredients, contain no alcohol or petroleum products, and use 85% organic materials and carry the USDA's organic certification. Try some today. Go to OldNESoap.com. That's OldNESoap.com. OldNESoap.com. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on the smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. If you have sciatica, then you know all about the crippling pain that travels from your lower back down your leg when a spasm occurs. It's brutal. In fact, it's enough to take your breath away. Dr. Zhang's sciatica nerve cream helps relieve persistent, shooting pains associated with the sciatic nerve in the lower back and legs. This natural, homeopathic cream contains the most potent ingredients to soothe even the most excruciating pain associated with sciatica. Stop the pain now. Ask for Dr. Zhang's sciatica nerve cream at your local health food store or go online to trasknutrition.com. Would you like relief from muscle pain, headaches, and discomfort to sleep better, have more energy during the day, and just feel naturally amazing? Fibromalic can help. Its blend of malic acid and magnesium can provide pain relief and comfort for those who experience fibromyalgia. It helps your body absorb more oxygen, and it works quickly for a significant reduction in pain within 48 hours, all without a prescription. Ask for Fibromalic at health and vitamin shops or shop Fibromalic.com. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony, damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. Welcome back to Fade to Black. 323-825-5045. It's the last segment of the show. 323-825-5045. Three two three eight two five five zero four five. Open lines right now. The CIA used Scotland as part of a psychic spy experiment, which they thought would give them the ability to harness paranormal powers, such as astral travel, telekinesis, and mind reading. As part of the top secret project, psychic spies in the U.S. tried to use out-of-body techniques and mind projections to visit locations in Scotland, namely Loch Ness. Now, it was reported today that the research went on for decades as the CIA worked on harnessing paranormal powers for use in the military. The project, as we know, was codenamed Stargate. And it is revealed 
in these 13 million pages of declassified documents the United States Intelligence Agency has made available on the Internet right now relating to topics all over the place, including UFO sightings. Now, I went and it's 13 million documents. I did look at some of the highlights, and a key aspect of this research was the use of so-called remote viewing and remote viewers. And uh, I'm, I'm quoting directly here, involving the apparent ability to see locations or events from many miles away and then describe them through words and drawings. The technique was said to be used to try out to spy on terrorists, enemies, and facilities in hostile countries, right? And do everything from here. But training runs appear to have involved sites in Scotland, including Edinburgh, um, uh, in, in Varnes, and Loch Ness, as well as global landmarks from Mount Everest to Stonehenge. It's it's unbelievable. Okay, we're getting reports that people cannot get through on the phone lines. I don't know what's going on. I don't. I've got everything wide open. I've reset the the software, and I don't know uh, what's going on with it. It, uh, it 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 appears to be random. All right. So all I can say is keep trying, and uh, we'll see what gets through. Uh, it's a, it's very strange. It's very very strange. Well, uh, anyway, the report was published, uh, a, a report by the CIA was published in July of 1984 on the topic of the development of a database for RV training sessions. This was in the documents that were just released last week. And now, the article, this is the article itself from the CIA, um, the CIA clearly took all of this seriously, and it describes how stories of astounding successes led to support within the intelligence community to investigate psychic abilities, including an alleged psychic visit. This is in one of the documents by a remote viewer, the great Pat Price, where Pat went to a sensitive National Security Agency facility on the East Coast. He described, you know, this is from the West Coast. He described uh, verbal and graphic descriptions of the site, which freaked the CIA out. And in the CIA's own report, it said, Pat Price was particularly detailed. It's incredible. Now, I, I have said this many, 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 many times. Stargate, the remote viewing project, and everything that they were doing up in Berkeley and Stanford, stuff is still going on. There's no way that the CIA shut this division down. It may be under another name. It's another black project. Um, I get uh, uh, all of this. But there's no way for a lot of different reasons. Number one, you're not putting anybody into harm's way. You're not. It's cheap. You're not playing. You're not the obvious, right? You're not flying somebody around the world. You're not flying a platoon of guys, a division uh, or or a, a single spy or agent or operative and 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 paying for the expenses of, of all of that. And you're putting somebody somebody's life in danger, right? And so you take all of that off the table. You're doing this from a room somewhere here, safe inside of the United States. There's that aspect. But the other part of it is you're never going to get an operative inside of the Kremlin or inside the Knesset or inside the walls in, in Beijing or North Korea. Anywhere. You're not going to be able to do that. To, to look at papers, to look at maps, to go into a room and, and see what other people are, are reading, looking at, talking about, right? That's the other part of it. And I can tell you right now, this is going on today. There's no, absolutely no question about it. There's no question about it. Russell Targ, the entire Pat Price, everybody that was involved in that project had extreme successes. Uh, we've had Russell on this show and and other remote viewers, as you know. And the the projects that they were working on, this was funded by the CIA. Um, uh, they can't talk about today, and they shouldn't. 
But things were ripped. McMonagall, right? Oh, everybody. Ingo Swan. This is a very, very successful, and it, and it works. Remote viewing is real. It's, it's, it's so funny. When I have, uh, uh, you know, Dax and, and, uh, and, and Dick Algeyer on the show and Courtney Brown and talking about the successes that they've had, and I've seen it done. When I saw it done in the Malibu underwater base, my skin stood up on my neck. It's absolutely incredible. All right. Uh, between the FBI and CIA stories, this feels like an alternative. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> All right. If these uh, if these phones are not behaving tonight, I will uh, I will defer over to uh, Twitter. Let's just go ahead and do that. Let's see here. What's the link to the UFO one document? We've already got that up. That's from Modern Masters. I gather that they thought if them as interdimensional, not extraterrestrial. Brian, I totally get that. I totally get that. That's exactly what this document says. And to talk about something interdimensional, when you think about uh, uh, George Van Tassel and his experiences out there at uh, Giant Rock uh, and the Venetians, right? Venetians. If you're from Venus, right? Oh, anyway, and his description of what's going on, there wasn't an interdimensional element. That was 1952. Right to go back to 1947 and talk about it in these terms, it's, it's pretty interesting. It seems like somebody knew something, and for for the FBI to take this document and go internal with it and and create a memorandum for everybody to read, obviously they were really really interested in this. If this was distributed today, right today, and this went throughout the FBI today. Uh, you would have to take this as, uh, you know, as being something that is uh, real, something to be concerned about. Interdimensional, disappearing in front of our eyes that their mission is peaceful. They want to come here and live, right? That they don't live on a planet like we have. This is uh, interesting choices of words. Uh, I gather that they, okay, let's see here. Malibu. Malibu, Malibu or Antarctica? I'm I'm out of place here. Okay, <laughs> I'm out of place. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, Mark, for this. I'll, I'll retweet that frequencies. I'll do that. Thank you, Gabriel, for that too as well. All right. Uh, let's see. Where else can I go with this document? Um. Uh, the, oh yeah, the, the last part of it too, I wanted to touch back upon. They probably cannot be reached by radio, but probably can be by radar. Very interesting. If a signal system can be devised for that apparatus, we give information and warning and can do no more. Let the newcomers be treated with every kindness. You know, back then we were shooting them out of the sky, right? Or at least uh, that was the intention. Unless the discs are with, um, oh, oh, and in the document, there's two sections of it that you can't read because of stamps and uh, other writing and stuff. The, the, everything is there, but there are stamps on the document, so there's a few words you can't make out. But unless the discs are blank, uh, blank, blank, with which our culture and science are incapable of dealing, a heavy responsibility rests upon the few in authority who are able to understand them in this matter. All right, we got somebody that got through. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. It's me. I got through. Who's calling? RJ. Hey, hey, RJ. How you doing? Yep. Hey, yeah. I'm, I'm really digging the show tonight. Yeah, uh, it, well, look, man, I'm. it's, it's a one-man show tonight when I can't get phone calls, but uh, that's fine. Yeah. I have a lot to say. I have a lot to talk about. So there you go. How you doing, RJ? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I'm doing good. And you're up in Alaska? Yeah, freezing to death up here. Now, what did you... Um, well, yeah, I'll let you go ahead because I wanted to ask you a question, but go ahead. Oh, no, by all means, you have the floor, sir. Go well, <laughs> uh, with Dylan's uh, description of what he saw, this chrome ball and what you have right. witnessed, what did you, you think about that? Uh, 
I, you know, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure mine wasn't Chrome, so I can't really relate to it. I mean, I was really into the story there. Uh, it was a great description that he gave, and uh, you know, uh, it just anytime somebody mentions sphere or dimensions on your show, my ears perk up. Right. Like a pedigree puppy. You know, it's a uh, yeah. It's interesting. It's very interesting. But the thing, the document is killing me. Uh, I just, that you're talking about, uh, I mean, it just, everything has settled in me knowing what I saw that night was without a doubt dimensional travelers now. And when, you know, when it was first suggested, I thought, no way. But this document, I mean, this is awesome. This is really awesome. And and, I'm I'm loving it. And, Again, the part that I, I need everybody to absorb about this document uh, is 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 the date. That's what's yeah, most important exactly. here. July eighth, nineteen forty seven, and to 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 I mean underplay this or play this down, it's just the wrong way to go. July eighth, nineteen forty seven. Again, that's the day that Walter Hout did his press release on Roswell. There is no way that uh, whoever did the distribution of this for the FBI, right? I don't even, it probably wasn't called the J. Edgar Hoover building in 1947, but, but Hoover was running the FBI at that time. There's no way that somebody in Washington knew what Walter Hout was about to release in Roswell. Walter Hout didn't even know what he was about to release in Roswell, right? <laughs> Right. You know, exactly. he had to get all of that stuff approved and it had to go up the chain of command and that stuff went back and forth and, and Ramey and they finally decided on what was going to happen here and boom, the release happened. At the same time, this is going on in Washington about nearly the exact same subject matter, which was a mm-hmm. flying saucer with people on board. Right. <laughs> that's, yep. that's pretty bizarre to me. And there's just no way that they could have been communicating. So something was going on and they were talking about it, right? Two different agencies that, you know, were not in communication with each other about this subject. No. Yeah. And that's, that's the, that's the whole point. It's the date. Yeah. The subject matter is there. I get that. But the date, if if this was a month apart, then one knew of the other, right? (laughs) Right. But the same day, you know, and and the person that wrote this uh, memorandum uh, for the FBI uh, would have written it a month before, right? And he's trying to get the distribution out, and he's sending it to whatever different universities and and newspapers or whatever. You know, all of that takes time. You know, you're putting stuff in the mail. You know, there there. Oh, sure. Yeah, there's nothing instantaneous. So it was written before July 8th, which means it would have been written before uh, the incident itself in Roswell, right? right. Bec- it's 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 a uh, it's a crazy crazy uh, uh, coincidence and a weird situation here, where I think that we have to back up and and take a serious look at this. That something was going on in 1947. And uh, this is the kind of evidence when people say, you know, well, what about the evidence? Well, what makes sense of this? Make sense of this. This happened on the exact same day. Two different government agencies are, are releasing the same information about flying saucers on the very same day. Something was going on in July, my friend. Yep. Yep. I agree 100%. Yep. Great show. Great yeah. show. I'm loving it. Yeah, it's, it's always it's fun. Oh, oh, Randy, I wanted to ask you. That's what I uh, – uh, <laughs> um, the other aspect about Dylan's story uh, uh, experience, uh, which coincides with your own, he feels that, like he was in communication, you know, that mm-hmm. this this object knew that he was there. And I know that you heard that. What did you think when you heard that? Well, I, I'm guessing it was, you know, I, I, when I heard him say it, I thought, well, okay, now that, that's okay, yeah. I mean, because I don't know that the ball of light the, with the little ding in it was, you know, in any way communicating to me. Right. But I could certainly see if they have an opportunity to go from dimension to dimension, 
that it would most certainly make sense that they could, you know, I mean, I'm certain that they would have the technology, right? Right. I mean, I always still wonder if what we saw wasn't a mistake. I mean, should we have seen that? Were we allowed to see it for some reason? Yeah, that's exactly Were right. We being rewarded. And yeah. I, I honestly don't have an answer for you. Well, I'm, you know, I, I still intend on having a, a, a go back, you know, with a hypnotist and do a, um, a regression session. Yes. Thank you. And, uh, see what comes up. I've got a couple of choices there already that uh, I can choose from, and I'm going to see which one I feel most comfortable with because I've never been hypnotized before, but uh, we'll see what turns up. Yeah, you should but, do uh, it. And, of course, my, my buddy, as you know, let me let me down on the phone call thing, and uh, pretty sure I know what happened with that, that uh, family members got to him and said, don't you dare even talk. So, yeah, you know, and <sighs> I, I get that part of it, um, just like Dylan calling in tonight. You know, it ta- it mm-hmm. takes a lot of courage uh, to come on a show like this in front of so many people and and uh, and and talk about something. Not only is it personal, but um, it may reflect directly back on you. But nobody knows who he is, you know. And right. and and you know, I can say that till the cows come home, right? But right. It, it it means nothing. I don't want to change somebody's mind. You know, somebody's got to want to do it and. And if, if it's going to cause personal uh, problems at home, or, you know, with the family and, and the way that people perceive you. And it, look, yeah. the, this audience is not going to know who he is, but his family is knows who he is. And he's calling in and talking about this. And now he's got to deal with that. Either they accept it or they don't. And if they don't, they don't want him to do it. I don't want to put anybody under that kind of pressure. You know, yeah. so. I'm going to pressure him from the side if I can. But, um. You know, and having you said that now, uh, let me encourage anybody that has any type of story of any kind that it is extremely therapeutical to talk about it, especially on the air. Uh, you know, I mean, it's helped me out a lot. And uh, I, I recommend anybody that's got a story to do it. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to be interviewing a 70 year old man that had a real good encounter with a Bigfoot 20 years ago in California that's never talked about it. And I'm going to interview him, uh, and he had three other people with him, but, uh, you know, convinced him that this is what you need to do. I'm going to record it and, uh, you know, for my own personal use. But it's just, it, it is so therapeutical to get it off your chest and share it. It really is. Yeah, yeah. And, and that goes with absolutely everybody. You know, the the uh, uh, the silence and keeping it inside of yourself, it, it just doesn't do anybody good. And the best thing that you can do is just open up how many times, you know, it's been in the hundreds, hundreds and hundreds on this show where um, I know that people have called in and they wanted to say, you know, they, they love the show and it's great. And they end up giving everything to me. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know, and it's yep. because you did it, you did it yourself. Right. <laughs> so I did. It. Um, right. yep. But but they right. find out that uh, as they talk about it and they because they don't share it with their friends, they don't share it with their family. They pro- maybe in a lot of cases have never talked about it at all. Right. right. And I, and I get exactly. that. But they come on here and they get it. All, and I can guarantee you they hang up the phone right. and they're like, man, do I feel better. Right. Yep. I've, well, I've and, and I have to tell you, especially when talking to you, because uh, your approach with the whole thing is so good. Um, it's just like sitting in a room, you know, uh, next to a fire with a glass of wine or something and BSing with you about it and telling you, you know, and it's uh, it's like family and it's really good. You do a good job. That's why I appreciate you so much. Ah, uh, Randy, uh, thank you so much for the phone call, man. How cold is it up there? Uh, I think tonight it's only uh, like thirty some below. It's not too bad. That's ambient. There's no wind. But uh, thirty. I, up the I was driving. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> thirty something below. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's. Well, I'm not going to. I don't have a chance to bring it up on my phone because my service is so crap. That's okay. Thirty uh, below. Yeah, wow. Anyway, it's somewhere around there. Yeah. All right. Well, Jimmy, have uh, a good night. Thanks for letting me call in. I appreciate it. I'm yeah, glad the thank, phone worked. Yeah, yeah. Thank, you, thank you, Randy. And, uh, again, I'll never complain about uh, uh, turning on the heater here in Burbank ever again. 30 below. <laughs> Stay warm, my friend. All right. All right. You, you, you got it. Good night. Randy, thank you for the phone call. Wow, that's yeah, that's uh, 
30 below. I'll never, ever, 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 ever complain again. All right, Rita has got everything up on, uh, I'm looking here. Everybody keeps asking for the docs. I'm going to retweet. It is called UFO1.pdf. All right, it's a PDF doc. You can search it on uh, the FBI's website. I will do this again. The the file is called UFO1.pdf on the FBI website. Okay, so there it is, everybody. And uh, you can uh, probably just search that, and it'll pop up. But it's an interesting read. There are some translations of it, too, as well. The The first uh, the first 10 or 15 pages of it um, are uh, uh, pretty difficult to read. You have to uh, uh, enlarge it. But um, the rest of it is uh, black and white and easy to make out. Okay? There you go. Boom. All right, we're at the end of the show. We've got a great uh, week lined up next week, um, everybody. Uh, next week, we have uh, Del Bigtree is going to be here uh, from the movie Vaxxed. Uh, Sean Stone is going to be here next week. And uh, it's just a, we'll have everything up over the weekend, and uh, we'll get things going there. So great week lined up next week. And uh, also, the end of the month this month, I'll be over at uh, Coast to Coast. And that will be, I think, the 23rd and the 24th. And, of course, next weekend, uh, not this weekend, but next weekend, uh, it's coming up in uh, uh, exactly 14 days, two weeks from today, we will be at the Conscious Life Expo um, at uh, the LAX Hilton. With that, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I want to thank for everybody that uh, called in and tried to call in tonight. And uh, it's been uh, it's been fun. Another fader night. Thank you, Dylan, for calling in tonight. Thank you to John Rappaport. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Kamarian. Show is produced by Hilton J. Paul, Mark T. Kovar, LJ3, Renee, Jonas. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Bob. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vito, and Mark D. Kovar. Fading by Dale. Webmaster is Drew, The Geek. Music, Doug Aldridge. Intro, Space Boy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. Syndication is KGRA, The Planet. This broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2016 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. Cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your Simi Church. Everybody be safe. Go back, Lee Tappy. Wow.